It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley are here. We're going to talk with the guy in charge of apps for Windows Phone 7, and I will take the Mango Challenge. It's coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Mary Jo Foley and Paul Theron. Episode 228, recorded September 29th, 2011. The Train Dance. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle your used gadgets, and Newegg.com, the place on the internet to shop for tech. Gazelle it today and receive a gift card from Newegg at Newegg.com slash trade. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, visit Netflix.com slash twit. And by Ring Central, the number one cloud phone system for business. For your free 30-day trial, visit RingCentral.com. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show that covers Microsoft and all its goodies, all the goodies coming out of Redmond, and we have some for you today. But first, let's introduce our hosts to my left, Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. Hello, MJ. I'm going to call you MJ. I know you don't like that, but I'm going to do it anyway. No, you can. I, I don't mind it. <laughs> you know, I, I, went to, I went to school with a, a, a woman named MG, mm -hmm. and... Uh, and so MJ just kind of rolls off. And then, of course, MG Siegler, tech, I just rolls off the tongue. Where are you today? I'm in a secret location oh. um, in Chicago, oh. but I can't disclose anything further. Oh, how exciting. Will, will, will all be revealed at some date in the future? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've said too much. <laughs> Speaking of secret locations, Paul Therott is here also from the super site for windowswindsupersite.com. And apparently Paul's been called to the principal's office. I hope you don't spend too much time sitting on that hard bench outside and that she's not too mean to you, Paul. Where the hell are you? I am in Fort Collins, Colorado. Is this uh, where WWV is? No, this is where my parent company is. Ah, and Penton Media, this is how they decorate? It's uh, a tropical look. <laughs> it's mango colored, as a matter of fact. Maybe it is mango colored. I yeah. can arrange if you want. We have a few extra gear clocks. I could have a clock with a gear. <laughs> In fact, you could have I'm this hoping one. not to spend too much time in this room. So <laughs> good. All right. I decorate. Are you in a closet? It is the size of my closet. Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking this used to be a phone booth, but then they took all the phones out. Well, it's sort of an isolated room that you can record in. Yeah. Perfect. Well, so glad you could be here. We also want to welcome uh, a special guest. Paul, would you introduce our uh, guest today? I will not. No, I will. <laughs> Mary, Mary Jo, will you introduce? Please. <laughs> No, our special guest is Brandon Watson, whose name, uh, or rather, whose title is too long for me to repeat, but I believe it was Senior Director of Windows Phone Apps at Microsoft. Wow, that, that's perfect. That is great. Hello, Brandon. Welcome. Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me on again. It's great to have you back. Uh, last Thanks. time we talked, you Windows... Those shirts, by the way. Windows Phone 7 had not yet come out, I think, when we talked to you last, right? Uh, we were really close. Close I think it was to right, launch. I think it was August of uh, last yeah. year, so we hadn't yet uh, hadn't yet launched. And at the time, we were talking right. about, um, you know, will there be a Twitter app? Will there be a Facebook app? That kind of thing. That's right. And That's right. Uh, and you've had some success since then. How many apps now are there on the Windows Phone platform? Uh, we are uh, over thirty thousand. I guess apps have been published. That's amazing. Uh, into the marketplace, um, and uh, and we're very very excited about that. I mean, obviously. Look, we had a conversation we had last August. People say, hey, you're starting from zero. How do you think it's going to go? Right. Can you build a, an ecosystem? And uh, we grew or are growing as fast as Apple did, so we're really excited about that. And developers, you know, they love the tools. They love the opportunity. They see the upside. So uh, it's, it's been going really well. Pretty. I mean, when you get to – when you, there's a certain number. I don't know what that number is, but I would guess 30,000 is, is, is larger than it. There's a number where you just – you have everything really people care about. You have Evernote. 
you you know you have uh, all the apps that people are all the games you know there's enough you have angry birds there's enough absolutely yeah, yeah no we we uh, we did some research and we have a little over 90% of kind of the top apps across all the platforms and we continue to work hard to to get all the apps and there's always going to be one or two that people say oh but you don't have foo and right. right now the current favorite is words with friends but you know those things like that will come and i'm not i absolutely not worry about it uh what you really want to see is whether or not you're getting unique features on your platform and so evernote you mentioned is a great example yeah. they have features that are only available on windows phone yep. so what does that tell you it tells you that they're willing to make the investment in building an app on our platform and build features that you can't get on iphone and android uh, because of the platform that we give them and, and how great the UI looks and, and all the tools, et cetera. So that, that speaks volumes about the strength of the ecosystem that we're getting features in the apps that we get uh, that are already on other platforms that they won't bring to the other platforms. I'm, I'm liking this fantasy ferret is now out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, I'll, I'll tell you something about Windows Phone. This is bizarre to me because um, Windows Phone sightings out in the wild have been fairly rare for me. But we were at breakfast the other morning, and the waitress saw my phone and said, is that a Windows phone? And I said, wow. yeah. She said, how do you like that? And I said, I love it. And she said, you know, I need my uh, contract is up, and I really want to buy one of those. But I wasn't sure if I should wait for the new ones. And I thought to myself, Holy who is cow. this woman that she knows this? <laughs> Holy cow. She's a plant. <laughs> yeah. No, but how great is that? I mean, that's neat. It's, yeah, no, I mean, obviously, it's, look, you're going to see more and more of that. It's, it's been, we, yeah, look, at, we've had... I'm not going to say we blew the doors off, but it's the people that like the have used the phone, love the phone, and those people tell two friends, and those two friends tell two friends, and eventually we, you know, we're we're doing fine. Directionally, we are in the right. We're doing well, and, and we're all very excited. And Mango just makes it all uh, all the sweeter. Yeah. So let's talk about. It. Well, actually, I should, Paul and Mary Jo. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Usually, I I just doze through this podcast, and here I have been. <laughs> 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 I mean, I've been completely monopolizing Brandon. So let me let no, you let, let, do okay. your show, and I'll just drift. No, I'm actually playing with Fantasy Ferret. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so I'd, I'd like to hear Brandon discuss a little bit. I, I, I know something about this, I guess, but I, I would like people to hear it from Brandon. You know, maybe some of the new application features that are available in Mango. You know, some of the, the things about Mango that make it better than Windows Phone 4 apps. Sure, of course. Uh, there's where to start. For, for developers... Uh, the live uh, live tiles in version one were uh, great, but difficult to use, and difficult to use because you had to stand up a service to actually uh, use them. Stand up a service, I mean, stand up a, a network service to power those live tiles. Uh, and so we now have background uh, true background tasks in, in Windows Phone, so you can actually control those live tiles locally from your app, and you don't need to stand up service. So from a developer standpoint, uh, they can actually take advantage of some of the iconic features of Windows Phone and these live tiles. Uh, without having to stand up a, a network service to go drive those apps uh, and drive those tiles. So that's a good thing. But beyond that, we've expanded what they could do with the live tiles, whereas before they could just put like a little badge, a little number on the tile. Uh, now they have full control. They can do front and back uh, tiles and flip them over, and, and we can do deep linking into the app. So you can do multiple pinning from within an app. Uh, say, for example, the, the, one of the canonical examples we use is uh, your flight itineraries, right? So you've got your Delta Airlines app, Fly Delta app, uh, and you can pin your itinerary for this Friday and your itinerary for next Wednesday and your itinerary for three weeks from now. And it's three different live tiles, each one of them updating independently Ooh, uh, with your flight nice. status. Uh, and then when you tap on it, it takes you right into that part of the app. It doesn't launch the app and take you to the home screen. It actually takes you to the information you care about. So from a developer standpoint, you can build really deep, engaging relationships with your customers uh, using the live tiles. And so that's, that's obviously very exciting. Has anybody uh, yet done that? Uh, I mean, is there a kind of an, a, a, an example you'd like to give that when you say, here's what you can do? Yeah, Fly Delta is a great example, and, and there's lots of these apps. I think, uh, you know, a couple of these sites that track this, you got WP Central as a whole list that they maintain of the cool live tile apps. I think they maintain at the top of their, you know, right on top borders, you can go there. But uh, Fly Delta is one that we love. All of our depth apps, basically when we go out and do these, do these deals with the bigger brands, uh, you know, we like to strongly encourage them uh, to build live tiles into their application. So Evernote, uh, what's, uh, what's another one I was using the other day? The, uh, well, not ESPN. There's some, I can't, now it's now I'm blank. Of course I'm live. I'm <laughs> but, no, but that makes well, sense. Even, even the built-in mail app does uh, this, right? You can the, pin the mail, well, live tile, yeah, yeah. arbitrary folders. Right, which I ended up doing for my expense reports, uh, much to the uh, happiness of my team. Uh, I have a, it's a bit deep, deep, deep pin to a folder in my inbox, and, uh, and so it looks like I have multiple mailboxes, but really it's just one. 
uh, you can deep link into different folders here. And, are you, are you finding that people now are just having very long front pages that scroll and scroll and scroll? I mean, they're adding a lot of tiles here. Uh, you know, people certainly are adding it, but at the end of the day, if you talk to people who actually use phones, I mean, even the guys that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps, they really only use so many of That's them. That's really true, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right. And so you pin, you pin the ones that start screen that matter and you, you call the rest and, and, you know, the ones that, the ones that you use will be the ones that show up, uh, the most. And so you pin those and that's great. And so, yeah, there is some, some level of, Hey, you know, there's a lot of scrolling here, but it's not because all the tiles are alive and they're not static. You actually don't mind scrolling because you want to see what's changed. Yeah, you're scrolling through content. Yeah. It reminds Content's me, always yeah, it's right. almost like Facebook's timeline. <laughs> I mean, you're actually seeing stuff, pictures and, <laughs> and uh, images and information about what's going on. That's but right. This, but the most dangerous edition was the, 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 the me tile has been all updated with all the integrated uh, Twitter and LinkedIn and everything else. Yeah, and so now I like I've got, this me tile. <laughs> I, I call it my narcissistic tab, right? Because I just, I'm always checking for, you know, tweets and whatever else and, and updates, people tweeting at me and it's, well, it's bad. I've, I actually, so it's funny. I actually think that those changes are a big deal because in the previous it's release, I would just delete the me tile, but in the <laughs> new release, I put it right at the top. Yep. Yeah, because I can go in there to do the things. Yeah, you can check in, you can put, you can post things, and then you can see responses to your tweets and Facebook posts and respond to them from there. It's all this yep. kind of one-stop deal. I mean, it's it's very useful. You have eight yeah. tiles. Yeah, think, go ahead. The thing I really love about the new me tile is how you can. Uh, filter out different feeds too. Like mm -hmm. you want to look at Twitter or you don't. You want to look oh, at, cool. um, you know, Facebook feed or you don't. And it's really nice to be able to switch instead of having all these feeds just pouring in there and just a muddle right. of, of a million friends. That's right. And then with the groups tab, right? I mean, because, you know, Windows Phone really is, we, we believe we're the first and only phone putting people first. It's not about jumping in and out of multiple apps and kind of feeling like you're bouncing between things. You really, it's a fluid experience. And so, uh, you've got the me, me tile, which is nice, and you've got the people hub, which is great. But you can create groups of people now. And as Mary just said, with the filtering, I, I have my boys, the guys I hang out with and spend a lot of time with, and that's one group tile where it's grouping all of their stuff together. So their Facebook, their Twitter, their photos, and everything else. So instead of one big people hub, it's a, a massively filtered down of people I care about. I've got my family now as a pin to the live screen, uh, start screen. I've got uh, my team so I can quickly email everybody all at the same time or check in on see what people are doing. Uh, and so just putting people first and having that integrated experience, it makes for a really good, uh, great uh, phone experience. Very, very customizable different. and very intuitive and very straightforward. Feels very fluid. Uh, but this is Mango. Now, uh, I understand that all the carriers are rolling out Mango starting now. Uh, starting the 27th. The 27th. 10 so yep. that was two days ago. Yep. And they're doing, uh, you know, uh, they're not, it's not a uh, monolithic rollout. They're doing staged rollout, right? Uh, well, you know, the joke I like to make is, you know, everyone's sure the nuclear reactor is going to turn on. Nobody wants to turn to full power straight away. So, right. uh, you know, you, you do it because let's just say we had some challenges before. We've fixed and made massive improvements. We're very excited about that. We're going to stage the rollout to make sure customers are happy. Was it, was it, uh, was it the no-do rollout that, that you were that you're referring to as it was problematic or...? Uh, you know, I'm sure there was some chat in the past that we don't like to talk about anymore. We're, not, we're focused on the future. And, uh, Mango's rolling out today, and customers are really excited about getting it. Well done. I don't, I don't well really like so. I, I actually, so I want to ask Brandon a rollout question. Can I, though? Uh, because I, I am curious, what, how did you guys fix it so well? Because it really was like night and day, Noto no kidding. and Mango rollout. No I kidding. Mean, it just could um, not have been a better experience this time. And I'm curious, like, how did you guys fix it? So, like, what did, so what did giving, you have to do to the process? Giving credit where credit is due. Uh, people You're going to say it was Eric, uh, aren't you? Eric Hautala. <laughs> people, people threw uh, Eric under the bus because he was the first public face of it and blamed Noto on him. And that was, he was brought in to, to fix and make better, right? And so him and his team, his, he, he's built a great team. They've done an amazing job. Uh, and I think the results speak for themselves. Right, and the guy has just done an incredible job. Did you? Ha uh, and did my he have to? The entire engineering did team. he have to strong arm the the carriers? Was that really the issue? Getting Let's, the carriers know, process, to do it. In I think process sequence? is less important than results, yeah. and I think the results speak for themselves. So, Paul, you think he strong armed the carriers? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, I, I have not, obviously. <laughs> I've not met Eric. I've seen a picture of him, and and yes, I do. I do <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because uh, you know it, it is you know it, Apple's the only company I I know of that's been able to get these carriers to update phones and you know and lockstep on across you know Verizon. Oh, hold on, AT &T. hold on. Apple Apple's updated 
one phone. But they do one exactly. They do we, one we phone, and they do any exactly, phones. and they right. do it, and they they do it through at, until recently one carrier, and they only do it once in a while. Um, right. This is this is a difficult thing to do, and you and the the opposite example is Android, which you don't know what the hell you've got on your phone, and you don't know when the hell you're going to get it updated, and there seems to be no schedule or timetable. Um, so this is impressive. The fact that you were able to update over a variety. Of, how many are, are there? Twelve handsets still, or are there more now? Uh, I think, yeah, I think that's right. But it, 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 Leo, it's it's great to hear you, who's clearly, you know, you've been an Apple fan for a long time. No, I'm an Android that, fan. That, that Microsoft has done it the best. I loved hearing that. <laughs> I'm an Android fan. <laughs> I'm an Android fan. Although, <laughs> we'll, we'll the new iPhone, we'll find out in two weeks. But right but now, Leo, can we just get you saying that Microsoft did, in fact, do it the best? Of what? Whatever. <laughs> of rolling out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mike, well, I'll, t I'll say this. Uh, uh, I mean, it, you can't compare Microsoft to the Apple situation because it's a very different situation. But compared to the Android si situation, absolutely Microsoft handled it well. And I hope that somebody over at Google is uh, talking to Eric and saying, so um, what buttons do you push to get these guys <laughs> to comply? Um, actually, the real problem is Google will never be able to do that because Android is open source and anybody can do anything they want with it. Uh, look at the Kindle tablet. And so they have no uh, leverage. You, it's very clear from day one, Microsoft had a lot of leverage just for the fact that the hardware is almost identical on at least the first generation. Uh, well, having the spec hardware is, it, you know, it's tantamount to a great user experience, right? You don't want uh, confusion they, when you, you know walk what you're in the store get. and yeah. buttons everywhere. So. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Last week they were telling me, because uh, I have, you know, this is great. This is the focus. This is what Paul told me to get. Well, it's a great uh, phone. And I love it. Oh, it's a great phone. I'm a, I'm, you know, it, I'm was a, my, it was my everyday phone until about, I don't know, about a month ago. I'm a Samsung fan. In fact, then. my current favorite is the Galaxy S2, which is, you know, this is very similar to the Galaxy uh, S1. Um, and now, but I know that there are features of Mango that might require it newer hardware. Is that the case? Um, so... Yes, that is true. There's certain hardware that didn't have like a a, a um, the magnetic compass in it. Okay, right? so, so it's a few uh, little that, details. No. It's not. A, in yeah, other words, when I get Mango front on facing the camera, uh -oh. front-facing camera doesn't exist on that I on the, uh, the Samsung Focus, right? Yeah. Um, so that's there's certainly those those features, and then there's going to be others that are uh, Wi-Fi issues. Okay, mm -hmm. so it would be if you wanted to have the full Mango experience, it would behoove you to. Update the handset? Is that what would you say? I, I, there's a full slate of handsets coming out. AT&T announced theirs, what, two weeks ago, I guess now? Yeah. Uh, they announced their, their slate of handsets, and depending on what country you're in, those, those announcements will ha have a, either occurred or are coming. Uh, we're definitely very excited. Of course, one can't uh, help but wait for, I guess, a little under a month from now. Everyone's going to be in London uh, at Nokia World. I'm sure there's going to be some Ooh. news, right? <laughs> I would imagine in a two-day full <laughs> event that Nokia's running, they'll have something to say about some phones that they I, may or may not be making. I will say this. Microsoft and Windows Phone 7 beats Mego all over the place. <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're looking for something a little more <laughs> So maybe, maybe we could maybe we could just move up the ladder a bit. <laughs> the N9, of course, uh, the Nokia 9, which is Amigo, is the only Amigo phone they'll ever will be probably. Yep. Um, People love that hardware though. But the, but exactly, yep. and you look at that. And I, I am not going to buy that running, whatever the hell Amigo is. Yep. But on Windows Phone 7, on that might be very compelling. It's it's spectacular. Oh, you know. <laughs> Well, there was quoted the Nokia guy the other day. So it was <laughs> stunning, uh, he said. Stunning, yeah, yeah. Stunning. So, but you do, but you already do have handsets from Samsung, Acer, Fujitsu, uh, HTC, and Fujitsu, HTC. Uh, I am sure I'm listening. It's quite a somebody. few, quite a few new yeah. handsets. People are excited. Yeah. Look, we just had the Samsung announcement. They're excited about you know betting more on Windows Phone. That's that's good news. Uh, people see the opportunity. They see the uh, the ability to build great handsets with an operating system that makes sense, uh, that, that customers love. And, uh, you know, we're just really excited about the opportunities going forward. Um, Brandon, could I ask kind of a granular question about tethering? Because a few of my readers have been asking me this, and I, I'm not exactly sure, 100%. Can any existing phones, are, are any of them going to be able to do tethering with Mango, or is that just new phones only, that's it, end of story? Uh, you know, I actually don't know the answer to that. I do know it's a carry-enabled feature. I don't know if uh, existing handsets. Uh, it not. So I just don't know. I don't. I don't know. I can, the I can tell you what Microsoft told me when I had the briefing about that. They said mm -hmm. that um, initially it will be new phones only, and that it will be up to the carrier discretion if to, they want to port it back to older phones. 
and that that could happen in the future, but there was no promise. Yeah. The, it, once you get past like level 300 classes on uh, on some of the consumer features of the phone, it's it's out of my area of expertise since I'm responsible for the dev platform. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can get to a certain level of, of, of depth and then uh, I, I catapult myself into the ineptitude uh, range. <laughs> 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 it's it's uh, it's angry Windows Phone Manager. I just fling myself against the walls of uh, features. <laughs> so, any, so any anything better else or the, new I'm hints sorry? on Nokia World? Any other little what? tidbits you can tell us? Uh, tidbits? No. I mean, look, it's just an exciting time, right? I mean, you've got uh, arguably one of the best handset manufacturers in the world, uh, who's bet very big on us. Uh, we've been working with them for a long time. It seems like forever now. It was, uh, I guess, February. When we made the official announcement at mobile just before mobile world congress so there's been a big build up here um but uh there's a lot of excitement around the platform uh certainly you know there's we've obviously been working very close with our engineering team uh and it's you know even in the field where we're doing these events we've got a world tour going on right now where we're talking to specifically symbian developers uh who want to make the transition to Windows phone and we we're doing events at a country level basis uh, and we've also got our developer and platform evangelism team is out gearing up for their big kind of round of developer education events coming in October, November. Uh, it's going to be a lot of noise uh, in the next couple of months around how to build apps for Windows Phone and new phones and uh, just general excitement around the platform. But as far as Nokia World goes, you know, I'm a speaker, uh, which is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, you know, the keynotes are going to be lively, as they should be. <laughs> Good. I'll be there, too. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hoping you guys uh, do some kind of a satellite event. I was told that was a possibility, so I can't go to London for that, but I would, I'm would, i hoping to be able to at least see it uh, live, you know, remotely or whatever. Well, we should invite Leo, and he can hold up his, uh, his oh. computer, and he can just kind of point the, there you uh, go. Point the camera I'll at it. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we promise not to throw you out of an event, Leo. Uh, I, I'm not going to ask you, Brandon, because I know you love all your children equally. But, uh, Paul, do you have, or Mary Jo, do you have a thought about which uh, of the next generation of Windows phones? Because you told me to buy the Focus, and I've been actually Yeah, very I think everyone's waiting on Nokia this time. We want to see what that N9. The, right? Yeah, I mean, some of the things I've seen so far are interesting, but the life is on hold until Nokia comes up with whatever they it do. Is, so. It is a spectacular device. <laughs> it is spectacular. And when you it say is, spectacular. It a device, you, uh, it's a device you put on the table, and it says, I'm in charge. Yeah. Good. That's it's, what I need. It is, it is fantastic. That's, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Uh, do you, Do you know if they'll dub it the N9, uh, Brandon, or uh, will they? Uh, naming, I'm not sure what they what they'll eventually settle on. It's yeah. uh, it almost doesn't matter. It's just awesome. It does. It does sound like you know we, we've been talking a lot about the analysts who said that Windows Phone would be dominant by 2015, and you know everybody's scratching their heads over that. But it does sound like if you came up with uh, you know something really good hardware. Uh, from a company yep. like Nokia, who that could really spend it, send it out worldwide, running an operating system that the that, that people really and I think Mango has actually brought Windows Phone 7 to parity at this point with the other uh, operating systems. I think that was it was a needed update. I look if you read the reviews that landed, I think what was it yesterday uh, when they started landing, uh, it, it, I, it it couldn't have gone better to be honest. I yeah. mean, it, you know, even even some of the uh, the biggest haters had uh, nothing but praise to say. So. It was, you know, it's good to see people using Mango, the reviewers talking about it, and, and being as excited about it as we are. It'd be even better when it starts landing on phones uh, broadly. Yeah. I, I got you know, umpteen hundred tweets yesterday from developers uh, excited that they got Mango updated on their phones. Uh, we've got, we had a crushing rush of new application ingestion happening yesterday because people now are starting to see Mango land on phones, so they want their apps out there for Mango. Uh, so there's been a lot of... Uh, Activity in the last uh, in the last 24 hours. So that's uh, it's really exciting. That's great. Is the tile the new tiling uh, the biggest thing a developer will will update it to make a Mango update, or are there other things on? No, no. There's fast app switching, which is the the multitasking that we have enabled, right? So with basically a line of code, you you get the instant resume. Oh, that's uh, great. Of the app, which is oh, really nice. Great. And it, it, when it you know it, it's literally a, a recompile exercise for developers. So, so they didn't. Out. What did they do in the past? Did they have to have termination code? Uh, you know, or how did they? Or did they just would they just stay in memory and assume that they were being run until they? No, were? it was. 
It's what we call tombstoning, and what happened was the, the app would get uh, the app would get a notification that was going out of memory, and it would have to save its state, and, right. and then the app would get killed. And so, uh, but it, it there was no kind of easy way to resume was the problem. You'd probably it, preserve it, that, of course, because you, you, as always with a constrained environment like this, you want to want the the OS has to have the ability to kill apps as needed. Of so course. you'd maintain that. You, the tombstoning doesn't go away, but you add the line of code that says, "Hey, but <laughs> if we're yeah, still but. in memory, we can resume." That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so when you accidentally hit the uh, hit the Bing button, you know, search button when you're playing Angry Birds, I hate uh, it when that happens. Back to the yeah. come right back to the game, and it doesn't have to restart the game, right? So right. it's little things like that. Uh, developers are also taking use of the uh, Silverlight and XNA integration, which is really uh, a big feature for guys building games. Uh, anyone who's ever built games to do things like graphic overlays for uh, for text is kind of a pain because you have to do different art uh, for different languages, and now you can actually just lay down controls uh, and do localization that way, which is nice. Uh, and uh, what else? So they've got the motion sensor API, which is, you know, the, the Microsoft Research guys went out of their way to make uh, using all of our sensors inside the phone super easy, uh, correcting for things like magnetic drift. It was a 30-minute discussion that kind of blew my mind, but it turns out uh, it's not math I want to be doing when I'm writing an app. Uh, and so the motion sensor API is now available for developers. Uh, so there's just lots of new stuff uh, inside, of the, inside of the Mango, but of course the new tools uh, RTM'd, I guess, yesterday morning, this morning? Mm -hmm. uh, it's all a blur to me. Uh, yesterday morning. <laughs> well, I appreciate uh, your being so, here on a day. Right. I mean, you, you probably you probably are exhausted at this point. So, I was in China last week, so I'm, oh I am my. not awake yet. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I, I what were you doing in China? Week. Talking to developers, uh, getting really excited about what uh, what their needs are over there, and having fascinating conversations. Uh, it was it was mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. Do you have Chinese carriers? I presume you do. Uh, we haven't announced. Uh, what, what our plans are in China as of yet, but certainly the Chinese carriers, of, of which there are a few, uh, those those are obviously targets. Uh, but my visit was mostly around let's let's just talk to developers and make sure we understand what kind of apps they're building right now, uh, what kind of phone uh, platforms because because in in China you've really got a range of Android devices from the oh yeah really really dirt cheap phone to right. all the way up to Android running on an iPhone four, which we saw, which was pretty interesting. Um, yeah, you could, you could buy that phone at a store. It was a little. It was an iPhone box, and it had the Android logo on it, which I thought was hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I know you're an Audible fan, Brandon. Uh, are you working with? I know the way that normally works with Audible, I believe, is that they have a toolkit that they offer then to the phone manufacturer or the OS company to create an Audible app. I don't know if that's how they've been doing it lately. Um, so. The way our team works, there's, there's two of us that are really responsible for apps on the phone. There's, there's my team, which is kind of the, the tonnage, and then there's a guy by the name of Robert Williams who's done an outstanding job with him and his team, and they, are, they go get the apps that if we don't have them uh, when you're standing in the store and you ask, do you have Foo, I won't buy the phone. Right. So his team is responsible for getting those. Audible would fall into that camp. And so we have a list uh, that we're constantly going after, working hard on. As you can see from the apps that are already there, oh, we've yeah. got uh, most – a large percentage of the apps you'd expect. Uh, I don't want to pre-announce any apps that are coming simply because I don't want to blow the marketing plans of any of our partners, but uh, his team has done an absolutely bang-up job uh, of making sure that we've got all the best top apps uh, and that, that uh, those apps are coming. So I would say stay tuned. I'll take it. It's coming soon. So October. <laughs> yeah. I love the Facebook app. I think the Facebook app on, on, on uh, Windows Phone 7 is the most innovative uh, on any platform and really is easy and, and sweet and fun to use. Did Facebook do that or did you guys do that? How did that work? Uh, it was a joint effort yeah. between the two of us. Because yeah. it's, very, it's very Metro, you know. Yeah. No, well, see, Metro is a language. It's, you know, people kind of didn't get it. Uh, I think Paul had it right when he said uh, Build just introduced Metro to the masses. Right. Uh, I was really excited with the Windows 8 stuff and, and the Build uh, conference, the keynotes. I, if anyone hasn't seen them, go watch it to understand what Metro is all about. If you if you're new to Windows Phone, but uh, Metro really is a new way of thinking about you know put data first, remove the Chrome, uh, and and make deep engrossing user experiences. And it started on the phone, and and now it's you know kind of migrating its way to Xbox and and Windows 8. So uh, it's uh, it's a really exciting time to be a developer on the Microsoft platform. Brandon, are you are you guys already um, talking to your developers on the phone about what they need to do to their apps to get them to run on Windows 8? And what what are you telling them? Uh, we're telling them to go watch the keynote from uh, from Build. Uh, there will be obviously more developer disclosures down the road, and once the once the Windows 8 guys have kind of let loose uh, for how they want to go engage with developers, 
uh, we will work with them. But for the time being, you know, the build was the announce. Let's get the tools out there, folks. Let's uh, give you the ability to download Windows 8, put it on a tablet if you want, or you know, what have you. Be it if you are at build, you got the tablet, the very very cool uh, Samsung tablet. Um, but for the time being, we're really focused on the here and now, which is you can buy a Windows Phone today. Uh, you, so that means if you build apps, people can buy your apps today. If you want to worry about Windows 8, that's coming sometime in the future. Uh, but certainly the, the opportunity is build Windows app, Windows Phone apps right now. I know uh, Loic Lemur of uh, Seismic was a little perturbed because it was so different doing uh, Metro apps on Windows 8. It's Metro-like instead of Metro on Windows 8 compared to the app. Of course, they do have a very nice uh, Windows Phone app. How, uh, how do you deal with developers? When you talk to developers uh, who are currently doing uh, development for Windows Phone, uh, is there is there something you tell them that, that makes them feel better about developing for Windows 8? Is it very different? Uh, uh, it's no. I mean, look, it's it's the first decision you have to make is what platform, and then the second decision is what you know using what. And so the thing that the Windows 8 guys are doing is fantastic, and we're really excited about it. But for us on Windows Phone, it's it's look, it's C sharp, it's XAML. Uh, it's, you know, if you, once you understand the language, it's pretty easy to build uh, for the phone. Uh, and the XAML is XAML XAML, right? It's just a, it's just a framework. So um, it's not terribly different. I mean, there's obviously going to be discrepancies, but again, Windows 8 isn't final. Just, they just right. announced to the world. We I think are anything, that, today, didn't, anything so. that didn't involve just recompiling would have made Loic unhappy, right? So that, I mean, <laughs> even though Loic doesn't write a line of code. He doesn't know, write a line. He's, he's, he's repeating about. what his developers are telling him, obviously. <laughs> but I'm, but I'm yeah, sure yeah. that, you know, the from the po developer's point of view, the best thing is, oh, he just runs. Uh, the next best thing would be just recompile it. Then the third best thing is, well, you're going to have to do some recoding. It's... it's Build once, optimize everywhere. I mean, I think it's the yeah, right way to think about it. That's the modern right? way, yeah. Because you're going to have different screen sizes. There's just a bunch of differences. I'm of fine. Course. But I mean, the, the reality is focus on your experience. Drive, drive those experiences with web services, uh, but really focus on the essence of Metro and not so much the implementation of Metro. Guys, you have some more questions for Brandon before we let him go? I got a question for you, Leo. One more I think we should address. Um, you know, Brandon is somewhat infamously went after Scott Adams. Uh, Mr. Mr. Windows Mr. Dilbert. He, oh, that yeah, was, I mean, that can was, we talk about that a little bit? I thought that was one of the more excellent things I had uh, seen this year. Was that you, Brandon, that did Thank that? Thank you. It was. Brilliant. It was. I, I'm, uh, I'm known of a bit of a cowboy around here, and that's uh, it, it has more to do with just I'm, I'm used to being a startup guy, and you see opportunities and you capitalize on them. WebOS was another one uh, that we did. Uh, look, you know, this. No one's going to wait for me to ask permission to do anything. We got to go. We got to go win this fight, and I can't concern myself with what Apple and Android are doing. I just got to win. Uh, and so you see opportunities. And Scott was uh, complaining about his Android phone. I love that all the answers from Android fanboys was, "Well, if you want your battery to turn <laughs> last longer, turn off the radio and yeah, stop yeah. using the phone as a phone, and you know, to kill one of the cores or whatever it was." So. Uh, one of the some, a bunch of people tweeted at me, but a gal by the name of Casey Lemson here at Microsoft, one of our engineers, forwarded me the post and said, "Hey, what can we do about this?" And you know, it was I'm not gonna lie, I was standing in my kitchen reading the post and said, "All right, let's try this." Uh, and I left a comment in his blog saying, "Hey, here's who I am. You can do a search on me. It's it is me. Uh, huh. But if you're really this fed up with your phone, we'll get you a Windows phone running Mango, and I think you'll find out that it's a it's a much better experience." And he agreed. You you, you call it the Windows Phone Challenge, and I think you're gonna do it with other people too, right? Uh, we we've done it. We just did it with Lee uh, with uh, with with uh, Scott and uh, and I guess Molly Wood got roped into that one as well. Yeah, Molly. Uh, did, I don't that, think Molly turned out quite as hoped. Are you kidding me? Does Molly is it? one of the biggest. She's one of the biggest Android fanboys, and she said it was a push. Ah, well, that's good. Okay, that that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the All biggest right. possible win we could get. There's no way she was going to say we won. No yeah, way. Yeah. But to everybody on her show, to her entire audience that we would never have reached, she has now said, it's acceptable. I take that as a huge point. <laughs> and it cost me five hundred dollars. Right? Uh, Leo, I no need I need a statement from you of a similar quality. <laughs> <laughs> no, I already said Microsoft did this better than Android, yep. and uh, and I think that's you could. That's I enough. think that's on record. There you go. I think that's that on record. Go. In fact, it's it's remarkable. I don't think I could think of any case where a company that has had twelve has twelve different hardware handsets. Uh, th how many carriers is it? Two, three carriers. In the U.S.? No, yeah. all of them. All of them. Four. Sprint and Verizon. And, and worldwide dozens. Yep. Able to push out a, a major update like Mango in, synchron in synchronicity. I mean, that's, un that's unheard of. I can't think of any time that's been done. Because we like to delight our customers. We start, you know, start with, start put people first. I like to say put developers first. But look, you know, we have an uphill battle.
I just and think Eric was win by copying other people. Uh, he's the Kurgan. <laughs> he's the Kurgan. Yeah. Exactly. He's got pictures of all the CEOs or something because that's <laughs> these guys are he's, an unruly bunch. You know your children's birthdays. <laughs> Let's talk. No, he's an awesome guy. No, so the challenge went great, and there'll be there'll be lots of other opportunities. Look, the reality is is we have to continue to try to be different uh, and win the hearts and minds. And if you just look at the talk on Twitter, even from developers, they say, "Look, uh, we, my team, um, our team broadly, the Windows Phone Apps team." We're just doing it differently, and we have a different playbook that we brought to the table. Uh, and it started, you know, 20 months ago when I got recruited into this job that we were going to do it the old way. We were going to be scrappy and, and fight a different fight. We had to redefine the battlefield in order for us to win. So, uh, Brandon, I tweeted you a few days ago because uh, Mary Jo told me. I was talking to, to Brandon, and he said uh, they might have something fruit-flavored for Leo. So, sure. uh, <laughs> so I said, can you get something? Like something my operatives already got your mango on them. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I, I, listen, if you're, if you're willing to say on the show that you will make the switch, that you'll give us an honest run, you'll put your Android phone away oh, for no, two no, weeks, no, put it no, in a drawer, put your iPhone in a drawer for two weeks, give us an honest run. <laughs> I can't do that. I'll, I'll I just got a, uh, the new iPhone comes out in, all right, okay, I'll tell you what, I will. If it, if it comes in the next couple of days, I will use it exclusively until the new iPhone comes out. But Brandon, I've got to review the new iPhone. I can't not use I it. I understand needing to review the new iPhone. Yeah, I just want yeah. to make sure that you have a critical eye. And you go in with your no, eyes. No, I think that's fair. I, and, and I generally am that way when I uh, test a new phone. I do not use any other phone. I think it's the only way to do it, and I think you have to do it for a week or yep. two. Because exactly. that's the only way to really get a sense of, is this phone going to serve, or are there frustrations here? Because it takes a little while, a day or two, to get used to it in the first place. I think that's a fair thing to do. That is the only way you're going to feel good about saying on or about October 14th, wow. Uh, this iPhone, <laughs> not up to snuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, this is a challenge. To be, to be perfectly fair, this is a big challenge uh, for you guys because, as as Balmer himself said, you started late, and these guys are iterating continually as uh, as as you are iterating. But 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 they got a pretty big lead on you. Uh, you know, we got a new iPhone coming out, which has voice recognition features. People are raving about it. Probably has a gigabyte of RAM. It's got dual core processors. I mean, this thing might end. We don't know, but it could end. But well, end up being a beast. You've got Android, new Android ah, phones coming out every it's, single it's, day. When you start playing the speeds and feeds game on phones, it means you've stopped innovating in the software. So I'll take our experience okay. over, you know, whether or not we have speeds and feeds. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, sure. You got, you got my address. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll take a look. <laughs> oh, man. So you're going to give me the challenge, in other words. Not, not take a look. I don't want to hear take a look. You want the challenge. It's the, the challenge. challenge. Boy, that's, a, that's asking a lot. But it's, you know, it's the only way for you to go in with your eyes wide open oh, to your iPhone man. days. Well, I, the only reason I say that is because I just got the new Galaxy S2. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm uh -huh. kind of, up, Leo. I'm kind you of in love this. with it right now. <laughs> well, it's a good test because... We'll, we'll cue like a montage of you using your new phone. <laughs> All right, I, I will. I'll be glad to do it. I will, but uh, the only thing I can say is until uh, the iPhone fine. comes out. Whenever That's that fine. Is. Otherwise, listen, how do you think you get the beautiful Twit app that you got from Dimitri, right? We got to make Dimitri that happy. Did so such I can, either, a good I can job. either give him your phone or I can give it to you. <laughs> well, give it to him. Are you kidding? If that's the choice. He's, ah, he's already got one. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> if that's the no, choice. I guarantee you I have an email from Dimitri in about 10 minutes. Yeah. Where's what my do you mean? Email? Don't phone? give Leo the phone. What are you, crazy? <laughs> um, yeah, well, okay, I'll take the challenge. I think that that's a very interesting challenge. Sold. Yeah, because and basically what I've what I've actually taken this on the reason I did get the Galaxy S2, is because I consider that the top Android phone out there right now, and I wanted to have it for a couple of weeks before the iPhone came out, so I could make a head-to-head -head comparison. But I think it should, Windows Phone Seven Mango deserves to be in there, and in, in, uh, and that's a trio of phones. And 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 please don't send me a Symbian phone because I won't use it. Okay, I'm just saying right now. <laughs> I don't know why I would do such a thing. <laughs> uh, I, I need to impress you, Leah. That's the only way I'm going to get invited. When are we getting a Windows phone show? I oh, that's interesting. People thing. down at, at the event down. I was talking to Paul. I was talking to Mary Jo. And, you know, look, you got Windows Weekly, which is fine. But I would love to see like a Metro <laughs> Dev show. Uh, you well, know, you got the guys that you're backing with. Uh, what are their names? Ryan and uh, well, well and a Travis, the Louder right? Milks so. do a great job. I don't think you need any help there. Uh, and Paul, after they, all, well, no, they need the Leo Pixie dot. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> after all, is the Windows Phone Seven guy. So we yeah. we we never give Windows Phones uh, short shrift on this show. Uh, I mean that that you you're getting good coverage here. I gotta say. Um, let's see. Well, you know what? If you take off and it becomes the platform uh, to use. Uh, going forward, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Way to hedge your bets. <laughs> Wait, by, by the way, Alex, your dad is calling, just so you know. I just uh... That's fine. <laughs> my, my uncle, I think. Or your uncle. Larry. Larry's on the phone. He there just wants go. to say Shanatova. So, and yes, you, yes, yeah, okay. So, um, Brandon, we thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. uh, your time. No, I appreciate it. And it's, uh, it's congratulations. And talking to you guys. It's, it's always fun seeing uh, Mary, uh, Mary Jo, and, and Paul at events. Uh, Paul buttonholed me and said uh, he, he gave me a piece of his mind, gave me his pre-review. It was good to hear uh, down at Build. But, you know, being able to come on and chat with you guys is always a, a welcome experience. So I really appreciate the opportunity. See, now I'm curious. What was the pre-review, Paul? What did you say? <laughs> I love Mango. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon Watson, love, yeah. Senior Thanks, uh, Director of Windows, uh, app, uh, phone, Windows Phone Apps at Microsoft. Uh, and he's at Brandon Watson on Twitter. And, uh, and uh, you can tweet him there. If you, especially Thanks if you're a Windows phone yeah, or de phone developer, mobile developer, you'd like to know more about developing for Windows Phone 7. I'm sure he'd love to talk to you. Every developer matters. They all count. Even, what was it, ferret? <laughs> Football <laughs> ferret. Fantasy ferret. Fantasy ferret. <laughs> fantasy ferret. I take it that's not a game that's about fantasy football. That's, I haven't seen that or, one Or yet. a wild animal. Well, you're fe it's featured right now on the front page. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Take care. We're going to take a break. We're uh, talking about, of course, Microsoft Windows. We're talking about Windows Phone 7, Mary Jo Foley, Paul Therott, and you. But before we go any further, I want to remind you about two of our favorite sponsors, Gazelle and Newegg. They go together like eggs and bacon. Uh, Gazelle, of course, is that great place you go to uh, trade in existing gadgets to recycle them or sell them. Newegg is the place to go to get the new gadgets. So you gazelle it today at newegg.com slash trade, and you'll get a gift card from Newegg to buy something cool and hot and, and fantastic. You know, we all want the latest thing, and, and it, it seems to be that it's constantly updating. Look at this Windows phone. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should sell my Focus. Let's see. Let's just see. As much as I liked the, uh, the Focus, and I do like it a lot, uh, and when Mango comes on, I'll probably like it even better, but let me just see what I can get for this uh, Samsung... Focus, because I'm going to be getting a new, a new Windows phone, aren't I? Uh, makes a call successfully. You bet. Free of water damage. Mm -hmm. This is this is a, this by the way is Gazelle that we're going through right now. Uh, rate the overall condition. Oh, you're not doing it. Uh, oh, my screen's not plugged in. I'm sorry, Alex. Let me plug in my screen so you can see my screen. Uh, rate the overall condition perfect, because I've barely used it. In a second, we'll get my screen up. Come on, there we go. And, uh, yes, I have the AC adapter, the rechargeable battery, and the original cables. Now, let's calculate. 81 bucks. That's pretty good. That, that, that'll get me almost half the way to a, a new Windows phone. You can see how the price has gone down. This is, I love this price history. So you can see when the best time to sell is. So now I'm just going to click Add it to the box. You could do this with all your gadgets one by one. Then print out the mailing label. Gazelle pays the postage, so you don't have to worry about shipping. And then they will send you a Newegg gift card, and you can go to Newegg.com and choose from, uh, I don't know, how many, how many uh, products they have on Newegg? Let me see if they say. 84,000 products with 1.9 million customer reviews, high-res photos, and more. Newegg is just a great place for geeks. They say, you know, sometimes they say men don't like to shop. Oh, we like to shop. We like to shop at places like Newegg. That's all. That's, that's what we like to shop for. Newegg.com slash trade. Sell your old stuff, make some room, and then uh, get a Newegg card for your cash value. Good time for back to school. As Newegg says, take it from a geek. Newegg.com slash trade. So uh, have you guys, you guys have always, you've had mango all along. And, uh, I've had and, it for a couple months. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, you guys, you guys like it. Is it a, is it a big difference? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. It looks different. Yeah, I think it, it's sort of like Windows Seven, right? I think yeah. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, I think a thousand a, small things. I think active tiles, though, is a really. This is to me, uh, even with the original Windows Phone Seven, I love the tiles, but I felt like you could do so much more here. Yeah. yeah, and this that I think that's the thing that consumers are going to notice, right? Yeah. Try I, I think holding down your back the, button for a second. Holding Hold down? that down for a second. Ooh. Now look what you can do. What's this? 
this oh is, my you goodness. can see these, the apps. This is kind of like WebOS. These are the cards of all the existing running apps that I could fast resume. Look at that. Pretty handy. Yeah. That's another handy thing. Wow. That is really great. And there's the fast. Now, see, I think that that Facebook app actually hadn't implemented fast resume. So that's interesting, too. Let's see if the people, yeah, see that? It went right back to the same page, but the mm -hmm. Facebook app reloaded. So that's going to be the difference. See, it's reloading. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the difference. When you get the Facebook app updated for Mango, uh, that fast resume is going to make a big difference in terms of your experience. I mean, this comes right up. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. All right. I can't, actually, I'm kind of, do you think I'm going to get that N9? <laughs> no, I, not before a Nokia. Son of a bitch. All right. He wants the Nokia. If you get I, it, oh, you get to ship it to us. I should have made some negotiate. I should say, wait, I should say, wait a minute, Brandon. Yes, I will. But on you, I, I, oh, where's Lisa? It's she doesn't mind negotiating. Lisa, call Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, look at that. Gazelle offered uh, 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 try to be wise in our chat room. Two hundred nineteen bucks for his Sensation Four G. That's great. More than my Boneyard. That's awesome. Anyway, uh, let, let, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted very easily here. Uh, let's move on. So um, let me ask Paul about this. Mm -hmm. So Microsoft had a company meeting. I heard that. Steve Ballmer spoke. <laughs> and people anonymously, admittedly, blogged and tweeted that, oh, my God, people are walking out on Ballmer. They're leaving in droves. Well, when you say anonymously... I mean, who are these people? Well, we don't <laughs> you know, know, but they, they... they say we are, you know, we're sitting here in the back and everybody's mm -hmm. leaving. Well, I could say I was sitting there in the back too, right. was I? So you think it's phony? You don't think that's true? Well, the way I wrote the story was I, I, I got a bunch of emails about that in the morning and I thought, I'm not going to write about this. This is, this is insane. Right. And then there was nothing really going on, it's so I kind of looked into it. <laughs> it's pure but hearsay. I just, well, it's, it's the worst form of hearsay. It's not just hearsay. It's hearsay from anonymous people. <laughs> Right. You know, all of these reports are based on commenters in a blog post. And so my story became, why does everyone just believe this? <laughs> you know, like, why, why is this possibly true? So I wrote a news story. And then in the wake of the news story, I heard from two Microsoft employees, and now since then a third, who have all told me the exact same thing, which is this. This thing is an open meeting. People come and go. That's the way it is. It's held in Safeco Field for crying out loud. They oh, need a well, place right. that can okay. they can have twenty thousand. They're people. probably just going out to the, get a beer and a ball and a hot dog. Yeah. Well, actually, two of them mentioned that basically this is what happens. People come and go, and in this case, they were all getting on the buses so they could beat the traffic. Yeah. And get home, and that it it, it wasn't like uh, there was some uh, concentrated effort to you know, boycott Steve Ballmer. Like they all stood up and turned their back to him or something. Uh, that's not what happened at all. So. Um, as Mary Jo knows, you know, there's a, a high rate of dissatisfaction in Microsoft uh, for Steve Ballmer and for some of his policies and so forth. There's no doubt that that's tr not true, but um, that's not really the point. I mean, um, you know, of course you would get the people who can't stand Steve Ballmer, whether they're in Microsoft or not, you know, commenting in this blog and, and, and doing a little bit of a hatchet job on him. Um, I, I, my point about this story is not so much whether the popularity of uh, Steve Ballmer is there or not, it's that this story is completely bogus. And it's amazing how widely it was just reported as if it were a fact. People, you know, and this is what's, this is what's wrong with the internet right it's now. It's schadenfreude. You know? It's people love it. The shameful well, pleasure in <laughs> others' misfortunes. Uh, well, in this case, others made up misfortune. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I mean, seriously, it's worth But no, that's it. why a story like that, everybody loves a story like right. that. Well, it's that psychology thing. This has come up on the podcast over this year. Sometimes you can say something that sounds true and people just kind of nod their head because it's, you know, this is believable. This corresponds with my worldview, so it must be true, you right, know. Right, right. Um, and then there's no actual deep thought about it's, whether this thing happened or it's not. It's like that story that IE uh, users have lower IQs. It's just, you yeah, know. Yeah, it is like that. It it's just totally right, like Because you know, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, because. I it, believe it. It must be well, true. Or, by the way, uh, Mac users are smarter and more affluent than uh, Windows users. You know, you, you hear that and you say, well, you know, that makes some sense because, you know, these machines are more expensive. These people might know more about technology and are making bigger bets or, big, you know, uh, more risky choices or whatever. And it sounds reasonable. You know, it's the type of thing that sounds, it's, it's perfect. You know, it sounds, yeah, okay, sure. That sounds great. But we have talked about the fact that Balmer, he's probably, I don't know if it... it, it, it from the in the outside world, Balmer is often uh, uh, thought to be the problem at Microsoft, 
Well, not, not, not just the outside world. <laughs> well, that's the question, and that's the that's question. Thing. So and I've that's also, why this story yeah. has legs. The question is, does yes. he have the faith, well, full faith of the Microsoft employees? See, I, look, I look at this as a different story, but yes. I mean, I, I, the reason we find this other story to be believable is because we also know that people inside of Microsoft and outside of Microsoft, many of them, uh, blame Balmer for whatever ills they perceive or have has occurred to Microsoft over the past decade. So, as 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 Mike Mark Pelletier is saying in our chat room, the story's not true, but it's truthy. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. Well, it's it's like it's like bl uh, blaming the current president on right. the recession. Right. You know that that really it, there's a bigger story there. And in the case of Steve Ballmer, what we're talking about is you know, and the, this is the inconvenient truth. You know, all the people that want to bring back Bill Gates. Uh, somehow have conveniently forgot that Bill Gates is the guy that drove right. Microsoft into the ground from an antitrust perspective. Right. Because this was the guy who was leading the charge on Microsoft acting like a small scrappy company and not really worrying about the law too much without uh, understanding that Microsoft had in fact turned into a, a you know, a dominant Goliath of some kind. Well, that, that those companies need to act differently. I think it's, I think your, your, uh, your Obama, uh, um, parallels very is very close because you know uh in in fact it could just be that whatever microsoft's troubles are it's it's the it's the way things are going it's the trend it's the economy it's and a continuation nobody, uh, it, nobody is ceo could make do you think there's anybody who could take Balmer's job and do a better job i think that if bill gates was in charge of microsoft they would be exactly where they are today it, it, yeah, that's what i think i mean that's, what's that's just an opinion but i mean uh it's also the type of thing that's maybe truthy because when you think about it it sounds re it, it's reasonable right Meg Whitman maybe could turn it around. <laughs> Sorry. I, I hear Leo Apothecary's uh, available. Yeah, the, you know, the other part of this whole story is, and, and the reason it kind of had legs, I think, is be, because people have kind of forgotten what Mini Microsoft is and how that blog works. So Mini Microsoft is a real guy who works at Microsoft. I've met him. I actually oh. know who Mini Microsoft is. Oh. And... And uh, I met him in, when I was doing my book, and and he, you know, the condition was I could never tell anybody who he was, and he would so write the forwards to my book. Uh, so I I know who he is, and I can tell you he's a very loyal Microsoft employee. But the people who post in his blog, you don't know who they are, and some of them probably are Microsoft employees, and Maybe a right. lot of them are trolls. Right, right. Uh, By the way, the other thing I, I would add to Mary Jo's comment yeah. about Mini Microsoft, you know, the the blog that was the start of all this. That post that everyone was replying to was written before the event, had nothing to do with anyone walking out on Steve Ballmer, and in fact was very even keeled in that this guy was actually very excited for the annual meeting because those annual meetings are always very interesting. He says, so, it, the first line, it's my most favorite time of the right. year. So if you read the actual post, you know, it's really about, look, it's, this is coming, I can't wait. And then all of the comments... Of course, of course the reason he loves it is free Kool-Aid. <laughs> okay, okay, and free sandwiches. Well, of course, it's, it's yeah. product demos, strategy meetings, yeah. and all that stuff. But, but, and this guy, we should say, if you look at his about, is his whole goal is to strip Microsoft down to a lean, mean, efficient, mm -hmm. customer-pleasing, profit-making machine. So he's got an agenda of his own. He's a loyal Microsofty, but he, but he certainly wants a different Microsoft... Well, he has a, a fairly pure agenda, if you you know, as far as agendas go. I mean, uh, I, I, certainly anyone, regardless of your stance on where Microsoft is today and whether or not Steve Ballmer is a good CEO, uh, most people would agree that that sort of thing is what anyone who loves Microsoft should want. Yeah, right? I guess you're right. It's not exactly heresy. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah. Oh, you it, want it us to really be a lean, mean, customer-pleasing machine? No, I'm sorry. That's not on our agenda. <laughs> yeah, you're not really a team player, are you? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the other other interesting thing about this meeting was before it happened, you know, memos went out. People were told, if you tweet, blog, take pictures, you're in serious danger oh, here. And so I looked all day. Man, I, I just looked all over the place for leaks. And I didn't find a single person who tweeted except a guy who was doing the sound check who didn't work for Microsoft. Right. Um, so, you know. Can that I just also, ask you, sure. what's, what's a train dance? train dance because <laughs> that was what everybody said that the best part was the train dancing right we don't know really do we <laughs> it must be some, it must be a microsoft it sounds thing. like a conga line kind of thing which <laughs> it does. is it's, it's a horribly i don't I, the idea of steve do. bomber going ta, 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 and people holding his hips behind him i way, don't know yeah. leo also truthy <laughs> <laughs> Not hard to imagine. But, and, and many Microsoft's 
review after the meeting was, overall, a very competent Microsoft company meeting. Polite applause. Pip, pip. Wow. Yep. Wow. In sharp contrast to the anonymous trolls who were so widely re repeated all over the Internet this week. He says, love for Bomber. People still stood up and cheered and clapped for him. Uh. <laughs> As for Just people so, you know, leaving. I, I know it, it's so uninteresting when things go well, isn't it? It says, know, like we, it says nowhere near as bad as Bill Gates' last company meeting, <laughs> where yeah. bombers started screaming at people to sit down. Uh, wow. <laughs> now, that's the meeting we should be writing about. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> sit down! Shut up! <laughs> well, wasn't this the same event that last year Steve Ballmer found and took somebody's iPhone away from him as he was taking pictures? Yeah, I think yeah. that was a couple <laughs> years ago. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, it, it, it's another, it's a truthy story, uh, and we'll leave it at that. And now we know the truth. The truth <laughs> of the truthy. Yeah. Um, Xbox Live TV. I, as you know, am very interested in this. Rob Greenlee was here uh, during our grand opening party mm -hmm. and said, hey, we want to talk. And I said, what about? He said, well, I can't tell you. Well, now I'm starting to think it might have something to do with this. What is it? Tip. <laughs> I don't know a heck of a lot about this. I mean, I so what I've heard so far is, you know, they mentioned it very briefly, I think at E3, that they were coming out with an Xbox TV service. Yep. Um, not really clear what that might be. I think every, the speculation, obviously, is around IP-based uh, television services. There's news today, I think it was from Bloomberg, that said that Microsoft is very close to agreements with both Verizon Fios and Comcast mm. to deliver pay TV services over IP to the Xbox 360, which is really, really interesting. Um, I would love to be able to use an Xbox 360 as my, you know, cable box, essentially, right? I mean, how great would that be? And if this thing could oh, do what the... I want that. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, it, and if it could do what the Google TV promised, which is combine this notion of live TV with all of those web-based mm. TV and movie sources all in one location, mm. um, how awesome would that mm -hmm. be? So I guess mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah, I think this is what that is. We, we've written a couple stories about this thing codenamed Orapa. And Orapa is supposed to be Media Room, which is Microsoft's IPTV, combined with Live TV and delivered possibly through the coming Xbox Live dashboard update this fall. So right. it is all coming together. And they're talking to the providers. Uh, you know, do you want to be on board with this when we launch? Um, I don't know. I, I think... Um, the timing of the dashboard update is supposed to be uh, th this fall, but I don't think it's actually gone out in preview form yet, so I'm not sure if the preview is what goes out this fall or the final is, but it was supposed to be the final. Yeah, so, yeah, here's I would the, say November is usually the, the time story. frame for this. Microsoft said to add Comcast, Verizon, Pay TV to Xbox Live, and they're in talks with about two dozen providers of music, sports, movie, and TV shows in the U.S. and Europe. That would be very exciting. By the way, Lou M. M. in our chat room, who is a Microsoft employee, said, Steve came on after five hours of demos. Balmer was last. It was an open forum. People were super tired. I wanted to beat the crowd. Yep. And so I have us. this just in, a video of the train dance. So, I'm <laughs> okay. Uh, just gonna Wait, was the train dance how everyone tried to leave slightly, like they just danced out the door? Well, somebody in the ch <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody in the chat room said actually the the train dance is what you do at Safeco Field when the train goes by blowing its whistle. Uh -huh. but, but, but then Dr. Mom says it's this. <laughs> I can see Steve Ballmer doing this. Oh man, do you uh, remember? There was a video where somebody put Balmer and Gates's heads on Irish step dancers. <laughs> I know so, I, by the way, I, I saw those exact girls at Logan Airport a couple of months ago. I'm not kidding. <laughs> they go I around. They, around they go the around from airport to airport. Yeah, doing the train. Yeah, no, dance. I think they did. Uh, people who know Safeco Field say, in fact, it is so loud when a train whistle, uh, a train goes by in Seattle that nothing can go on so what they do is they play music in the stadium and people just kind of dance around till the train is done going by and then the that was a good that was a good place to build a stadium <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm excited about microsoft uh, uh, tv i think that would be uh, I am too. and uh, presumably what rob was talking about was uh, the notion of having some content creators like us be on that uh, as as well and i would love but rob if you're if you're listening <laughs> I'm sorry I snubbed you. <laughs> Please come back. It was a big party. There were a lot of people. We're going to take a break, come back with uh, more. Our great, uh, I just love our panel on this show now, Mary Jo Foley, 
giving us uh, the gender equality that we <laughs> that we so needed. desperately <laughs> needed. It was a sausage fest, <laughs> and, and, and Mary Jo has put some bacon on the table. Thank you, Mary Jo. I think that's a compliment. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will accept that provisionally. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about one of our great sponsors, the, go, the good folks at Netflix. Uh, you know, anybody you talk about uh, IPTV, Netflix, of course, is right there. That you got to have Netflix. It's it's the uh, you know the gold standard. Of course, Xbox already has Netflix, as does everybody else, including the iPad, the iPhone, Android phones. Does Windows Phone Seven have Netflix? They do. They do. Um, Mac PC, of course. Uh, PlayStation 3, Nintendo Wii. It just goes on and on. In fact, most new TVs, which they almost all have internet connections, they always have Netflix. The Blu-ray players, they all have Netflix. So I know you can get Netflix streaming on your big screen. I just want to make a pitch that you should try it if you haven't. And, and if you haven't, Netflix.com slash twit for a 30-day free trial. I'm not saving you a lot of money. You don't have to really, you know say, oh, thank you, Leo. It's only $7.99 a month. It's a great deal, and I want you to try it today. Go to netflix.com slash twit. If you're already a Netflix member, do me a favor and, uh, and tell a friend. Nerdcore Rising, have you seen this? Uh, well, oh, no, we shouldn't really start watching the movie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> um, there is so much great stuff on here. I just want you to try it. Swingers, Good Will Hunting, Dirty Dancing. Hey, before you see the new one, which is, looks really crappy, <laughs> Watch Dirty Dancing, the original with Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze. They got they made, they remade Footloose too. What the hell's wrong with this world? Watch the originals before you go see those crappy remakes. And great TV shows like Mad Men. Um, I accuse my parents. Mystery Th Science Theater three thousand. I love that. Uh, <laughs> Joel Hodgson. Uh, and it's a juvenile delinquency melodrama. And uh, Joel... <laughs> with robots. With robots. No, you know, they, you know what they do. They sit, sit in the audience and they make jokes about it. I mean, it, look, this is howling fun. You're going to love it. And it's free for 30 days. Netflix.com slash twit. We thank them for their support of our entire network. They carry us. They buoy us up. They are the wings beneath my wind. <laughs> and now back, speaking of wind, to Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. And big news... Big news on Zoom Pass. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo! Actually, Mary Jo, I have a question for you. Yes. <laughs> in, in the in the blog post that announced this, they were referring to it as Zoom Music Pass. Have you ever heard this referred to as anything other than Zoom Pass? No. Okay, so I, I was just wondering if I had missed something for five years running. <laughs> no, but remember, there were rumors they were going to separate out movies and music and ah. have a muse, um, movie pass. Maybe in Canada pass. it is just music. I bet you it is. It may is. be, yep. Because well, no, here, it, here it's just music, too. Yeah, so that's what they call... Oh. You know, another, well, uh, maybe they're setting the stage for a future subscription service. Ah. Uh, yeah. That is but there were, there were rumors for that. Uh, so around making the TV distinction, movie. even though yeah. there is no distinction right now, but making that distinction so that yeah. when they I do that movies. Was interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. They, they, they also sort of explicitly referred to something called the Zune Music Marketplace. Okay. So. Um, which was previously just Zune Marketplace, which has, you know, music, TV shows, movies, etc. That's interesting. Um, so I thought yeah. that was interesting. Yeah, so you brought it up on the site and see it's called Zune Pass. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So uh, it's also, well, it's also fifteen dollars a month here, not ten, right? Isn't well, it? Well, that's in the what's US? changing. Oh, that is. Oh, good. Yeah. So right now, Zoom Music Pass, as we're now calling it, is fifteen dollars a month, but you get to keep ten songs each month, which is a ten dollar oh, right. value. So yep. if you are an active buyer of music, it's that's actually a really good deal. Um, they're changing it starting on October third, so that it's going to be nine ninety nine a month, but you'd no longer get the oh. free songs. Oh. Um, so depending on your perspective, that might actually be a little bit of a price hike. A hike, sorry. I always uh, forgot to buy the ten songs. I know, I know. Yeah. I do this all the time. And they I, were nice. I mean, they would remind me with an email and yeah. everything, and I'd still forget. Yeah. So if you're an existing subscriber in the U.S., I guess you can continue at the fourteen ninety nine level and keep getting those free songs. But if you are a new subscriber starting after October third. Uh, you only have that ten dollar a month option. But I guess the other big news, and, and really only five years later, uh, well, four, four years later, 
They're bringing Zoom Pass, oh, Zoom Music Pass, Canada. and the Zoom Music Marketplace oh, to Canada. Yeah. My, how does that go? My, I'm close. <laughs> we have Canadians well, in the really audience. Not, really not. <laughs> I think we need a train dance. <laughs> uh, no, that's that's you know it's, I I always feel terrible because we have you know fully a third of our audience is outside the U.S. and I we know. talk about and, these things and uh, and it's you know I've got somebody from Denmark here, two people from Canada here, and we talk about these things and we we never say things like except that you can't get it. And so I apologize. Uh, yeah. Well, it's hard. It's hard to even keep track of that stuff. To I be honest, exactly. But, I only know what um, I. Can it's do. not. It's not like we we hate the rest of the world. Um, well, we do. Well, right. I mean, collectively, we do. We're but, America. I mean, We're number one. Paul, don't forget it. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Right. Just kidding. I'm reminded of that every time I leave the country. <laughs> no. So uh, <laughs> I'm not see, folks, I just we just uh, I just literally pissed off one third of our audience. Yeah. I want to apologize. Well, and, I'll, uh, I'll I'll save it for you, Leo, because the way I the way I always say this is uh, no, you know, Americans feel that we're the most you know superior country on earth. I mean, just ask them that the people who have never left left this country in particular feel exactly very strongly right. about that. That's who I was making fun of. I was being a <laughs> so, bear there, and uh, of course. Anyway, uh, so if you do live in Canada and you've been pining for the service, um, it is coming. I get it. Pining. I think the thing that's interesting about it is that, of course, Microsoft's no longer making uh, Zoom devices, so this is primarily aimed at both Windows Phone users who have Zune software on the phone. And also, by the way, on the Xbox 360, because these services uh, will happen as well through this new uh, uh, dashboard update that's coming, I think, in November. Yeah. Cool. So uh, I guess now that I'm getting a Mango phone, I best <laughs> renew my Zune Pass. Yes, yeah. I think you should. I, I always thought Zoom Pass was the greatest deal, but of course, then along came RDO and Mog and now Spotify. Right. Yeah. I'm a huge I, I, Spotify I, I fan. I think this, this puts them more in line with the radio, Spotify people, you know, yeah. the, price, the pricing sequence. That's why it's $10, exactly. Yeah. exactly. I think so. It's, it's definitely aimed at that. Now, let me. And it's probably a lot of people like you who, who get that, you know, get the 10 songs and forget, right? right? I mean, so in some ways, depending on your needs, you know, this might be a better, a better deal. Let me just well. it, it, the Zoom experience on Mango is it different at all? Is it is it the same? It's not super different. Uh, what they've changed. You in could there play in are, the background, but I guess you could probably do that before. Yeah, you yeah. could always do that. So okay. there, the the playback controls are bigger and more uh, consistent across the video and and um, and audio controls. The some of the screens have been rejiggered a little bit. The the play now button is right there in the front when you go into the Zoom. Uh, software, and then they also have some lock screen integration, so that the album art becomes your lock screen art optionally if you want it to be and then those nice uh, controls come down over the lock screen and they're uh, they did that before but now they're bigger and easier to tap isn't there some new smart dj features that yeah smart dj right on on the phone yeah. uh, playlists um yep yeah, sorry yep that's right smart, smart DJ. but it, it's hard to say it's hard to say just looking at it but um for example on that screen you can see the uh, uh, shuffle and uh, repeat those things are there now, and they used to be hidden until you tap the button. So little. they've just made some nice little fit and finish type right. changes to the UI, basically. Alex Gumpel is so retro. He literally has the association on here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how cool it is to borrow someone's phone and then make fun of their music. By Bad way. finger. Yeah. Everyone knows Boys. it's windy, Leo. Everyone knows <laughs> it's windy. Uh, I'm the looking at the of Spook. the Star Trek. You are films. just completely retro. You're <laughs> such a retro guy. That's, that's the great thing about Zoom Pass is I got all this old yeah. stuff. It's on there. Yeah. yeah. Mason Williams, Classical Gas. There's a great it should, song. It should be noted, too, by the way, Smart DJ, which is sort of analogous to those genius playlists you get on the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, if you have a Zoom Pass, can you use all of the 14 million songs that they have in Zoom Pass, not just the songs that are in your collection? Not so that's pretty huge. That is really awesome. Yeah. So actually, if you go back one screen, okay, and then uh, tap Smart, Smart DJ. DJ. So it's going to pull up other related to Strawberry. Well, if he has a Zoom Pass, actually, I'm not sure if he has. I think you have a Zoom Pass, right? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we're so, getting the Birdman of Alcatraz playing Stringman, Snake-eyed Woman. So the, apparently, some sort of algorithm has determined that that's similar to Incense and Peppermints. Mm -hmm. It is actually. This is good. I would have never heard of this. The yeah, so if, you tap the song, uh, if you tap the song name at the bottom, you can see a list of the songs that are in the playlist. Oh, look at this. String Man by the Mamas and Papas. And then see there's a save button, and now you can save it. Oh, this is, that as this a, is right freaking name. awesome. Yep. So this is like Pandora kind of, except that it's not because 
you, you get to choose what you want. You don't have yep. to, yeah, I mean, that's just really yeah. awesome. Mog uh, has a Mog radio feature that's somewhat similar, although I don't think as well implemented as this, actually. Now, the, the improvements to the lock screen when you're playing music, I really like. So, um, yeah, so yeah. actually, play, uh, you're playing the music, so yep. turn the phone off. Okay. And then turn it back on. All right. Mama's and, and Papa's should, still playing, and then we have a, a little control. No, no, watch, 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 watch. See, now that, oh. that now, or the artist imagery now comes up. Oh, there's up John the Phillips and uh, Mama <laughs> Cass. Oh, my God, all the water's gone out of the pool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really cool. I yeah. Oh, I can't wait to get a, a mango phone. Yeah, Golly, is, I'm going to love this phone. There, there's some. This is the kind... I'm, I'm being facetious, obviously, but this is the kind of thing that... Uh, I, I think Microsoft does really well, and I think that that is yep. something that is unique in Windows Phone is this very tight integration. Yep. Mm -hmm. you, and, and a very thoughtful UI, I think. Cool. Can't wait. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be really great. And now it's in Canada. Uh, I know Alex is listening, so I'm going to charge him with taking away your Samsung phone. Okay, well, Alex. Using, yeah, using Alex phone. is the only, I think you're the only person at, at, at Twit that uses a uh, Windows Tony phone. Tony is considering a Mango phone. He is. He's considering uh -huh. it. And he actually asked me if I would mind if someone else had a Windows phone. Well, wait a minute. You know, Tony borrowed my Focus for a long time. That's right. In fact, he, I only got it back because I, de I deactivated it. <laughs> I, thought, this is how it I, thought, Leo. I thought Tony had it. In fact, you know what? He can have this. He can have the Focus if he wants. Now, now that I'll have a mango phone. I know I have to send the mango phone back, but this one I own. So if Tony wants this. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, I am a father to my people. Uh, Liz came to me yesterday. You're like Jim Morrison, you know. I am. You are all my babies. You're all my babies. You're all my babies. Uh, take out the SIM, though, because... Uh, it's my it's my account, but you can have this phone. Look, you, look at Tony you, running up to get the free look phone. At this. Free phone. <laughs> yesterday, Liz Liz Lemon so came up to me yesterday and she showed me your broken uh, Kindle. I said, "Here, have mine." So I'm yeah. just that kind of a guy. But it's don't always because him, I got a new one. Wait, coming. don't make him wait. No, I'm taking out my SIM. Oh, I see. And then and then I want you to erase all my data, my personal stuff. <laughs> well, I did last time. Yeah, you did too. Well, Leo, you can do that remotely. Yep. Can I? I can wipe it. <laughs> there you go, Liz Lemon. I am not Jack Donaghy. I am Tracy Jordan. All right. Enjoy your new phone. Thank you very much. Now, I absolutely, Brandon absolutely has to send me a phone, or I'm taking yours, Alex. No. And he wandered off like he was a homeless person. That's how he walks. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Homeless Wang. Uh, <laughs> I actually, in, in all seriousness, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up a, a touchy subject. Okay. Um, oh. Microsoft made a deal with HTC yesterday uh, over Android. And according to Goldman, that deal is going to generate $444 million a year from Android patent licenses. Actually, it's not just and HTC. In that includes Samsung, HTC, uh, and several other carriers. The deal yesterday was with Samsung. Well, uh, to be fair, other people have said that that figure is way high we've heard though five bucks a phone from htc and that's yeah. a, so okay yeah i, I mean, think that number all, assumes 15 dollars a phone but yeah they, no one even really knows how much microsoft's getting per phone in these patent deals and i bet the number varies based on how many handsets each of them sells too mm -hmm. you know uh, but i i actually when i saw that number today when i was looking at the reports i was like i bet that's low I bet that oh, really? number's really low. Yeah. Because uh, Goldman is estimating three to six dollars per Android device. You re remember, Paul, there's half a million new Android yeah. phones being yep. activated every day. Leo, Windows Phone doesn't pay for itself. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, Android pays for it. Uh, now, of course, Google was incensed by this deal, saying Microsoft, instead of innovating, is mm -hmm, litigating mm -hmm. and they're making money. Uh, they use the word uh, extortion. Extor yep. Extort is Did the word. Did you see Frank Shaw's response to No, that? I didn't see that. <laughs> this is absolutely priceless. Let me see if I can bring up the exact quote. Yep. This is beautiful. Say, uh, Frank Shaw is the head of communica corporate communications for Microsoft. He, In a tweet, he wrote, let me, boil down, <laughs> let me boil down the Google statement from 48 words to one. Wah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How great is that? <laughs> <laughs> nice image. Nice, nice image of Johnny Cash there for the Zoom Pass fans. Uh, I love it. And then he would say, I would encourage the folks 
in MV. I'm not sure where that is. What is MV? To slowly Mount read View. Graph Fiverr blog on the top of today. Here's the link again. Yep. Mountain so, View. Mountain yep. View. We recognize that some businesses and commentators, Google chief among them, have complained about the potential impact of patents on Android and software innovation. To them, we say this. Look at today's announcement. If industry leaders such as Samsung and HTC can enter into these agreements, doesn't this provide a clear path forward? Well, wait a minute. So now they're saying, uh, Google, we want some money from you, right? Hey, Google, you know, uh, Android's gotten a free ride. Yeah, and uh, uh, the thing that Google hasn't said in any of its blog posts or tweets is, we don't violate pat Microsoft's patents. I haven't seen anybody say yeah. that. God, you th you'd think legally well, someone would have come up with that little line. That's actually yeah. a good point. I mean, you, you can say, well, sa look, uh, Samsung and HTC are just going to say, well, go uh, fine, we'll give you a couple of bucks. You know, we, we don't want this to go out forever. And there's the risk, as they have a serious risk with Apple, uh, mm -hmm. Samsung does, of, of, well, by of the way, those being pulled from the market. Microsoft partners as well. Right, right. and they, and they sell a lot of stuff. Samsung. Well, they sell a lot of stuff to Microsoft right. and so forth. There's, there's two companies that are fighting Microsoft over this and saying that they don't think they're violating their patents. One of them is Motorola Mobility, which is being acquired by Google right now. Yep. They're fighting them in court. And the other one is Barnes & Noble, which is fighting them because Microsoft tried to get the patent deal with them for the Nook because Nook has Android inside. Right. And what about Amazon, though? Because... Amazon's uh, I got think that's that going to be a Kindle big question. Amazon's Android. got a uh, yeah. yeah some kind of a tablet, I guess. Right. I didn't really pay attention to that, but <laughs> um, I guess it's running on Android, which you know, as right. we know, is the focus of these suits. You yeah, know, Amazon signed a, a patent deal with Microsoft, but it was for Linux. It was not for Android. Right. I sure would I, I like to see. Android, the, I would like to side. see the source code. I really would. I got to mm -hmm. see the source code. A lot of people would like to see the source code. <laughs> show us the source code. Show well, us. the one thing. Uh, most companies now. What is it? Seven or eight companies now. Seven or eight Android companies have cross licensed patents with Microsoft, and two have not. Yep. So, that's a pretty good track record. Or well, again, you point out they're Microsoft partners. Um, yep. it's, it may be yeah. cheaper for them to give them three bucks a phone or whatever it is. We don't even know what the amount is than to continue to litigate. It is not necessarily an admission of guilt. It right. may just be prudent business. Yep. Yes. Yep. But I'll tell you who's not going to do that, and that's Google. So at some point, and notice, by the way, the counterclaim to what you just said, Paul, is that Microsoft mm -hmm. has not sued Google. Mm -hmm. Google doesn't sell their own handset, though. Well, they could sue Google. Yeah. I hope they do. They could sue Google. And, well, and I think the reason they have it is because Google is going to dig in its heels. So that's when you're going to say, show me the source code. Mm -hmm. I, I welcome this regardless of the I outcome. Do too. I, I would love I to do see too. Uh, these two guys go at it in court. Absolutely. Yeah. No, let's, let's get this resolved once and for all. Remember how long the SCO lawsuit went on against <laughs> Linux. Yeah. And yep. SCO ultimately lost. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think you, I think it comes down to show us the source code. Let's see the smoking gun here. Yep. Uh, and all of these deals are done in secret. You know, they're all done with you can't say anything about it from now on, you you know. Yep. Sure. Right. So it's Barnes & Noble and Motorola. Yeah. <laughs> Holding out. <laughs> Barnes & Noble is really the interesting one, too. They When they yep. uh, decided they weren't going to sign on the dotted line, they put out a public answer to Microsoft's complaint about this, and they said, Microsoft wanted us to sign an NDA to tell us which patents we were violating. Right. And we said no. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't smell good, regardless. And I think if there really were merit to the lawsuits, they would say, okay, here, look, side by side. And we've seen that before in other situations, side by side. Here's our source code. There's their source code. <clears throat> so what do you think about the, uh, the fire? I didn't light the fire. I tell I you what I did. Awesome. I tell you what I did. We got up early. We did the coverage of the of the event, yep. um, uh, and uh, Tom and I, as and I, and uh, I immediately bought two. I bought the fire, of course. I pre-ordered the yep. fire. But you know and what I touch. liked? No, I didn't get the touch because I don't. Oh, you did. I got the seventy-nine dollar classic. Okay, yeah. I pre-ordered a touch as well. Why the touch? Because I just want to review the, it. You, I want to give my wife the option. You know, I think I, I and, and and I also want to see what it, the reading experience is like. To honestly, I'm not sure that I want to go to a tablet for reading. Yep. I really do like the e-ink screen. I agree, and I like the three G deliver, you know, deliverability yep. uh, and the freeness of that. So um, I think I'm going to compare them for myself, and then also for my wife who uses a Kindle. Yep, uh, give her the option to 
move to the touch, or if she wants to go the tablet route, she can do that. Yep. yep. Uh, I'm with you on that. We'll see. I, I think yeah. the biggest deal here is that uh, virtually across the board, this tablet was exactly what everyone thought it was going to be, except for one thing. It was even cheaper than people oh, said it was going to be. Stunning. The price, one ninety nine. The price is absolutely unbelievable. And there was a beautiful quote somewhere, I think it was on CNET, where you could buy all four of the new Amazon Kindles and still it would cost less than a 32-gig iPad. I think, I think that's exactly, yeah. I think Molly Wood pointed that out, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. classic. Yep. Well, it was someone. It was actually a commenter who did All that. Right. That's why the way why I bought the uh, classic, which is seventy nine dollars. That's the lowest mm -hmm. price Kindle ever. Uh, I think the keyboard's wasted. I don't think I use the keyboard that much. Yeah. I just want the basic reading experience of e ink, and I want something I could slip in my pocket. Uh, yeah. You know, because I have an iPad, I can read the Kindle books on that. I but in fact, I have every Kindle ever made. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I know you're you're a Kindle fan, right, Paul? Yep. Oh yeah. I am too. I love my Kindle as well. Yeah, there I am with the uh, yep. the, the sec second and third generation Kindle, mm -hmm. uh, both of which have now been given away. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. <laughs> my staff knows when when there's a new product, immediately come to Leo <laughs> and say, "Can I have the old one, Dad?" <laughs> I did buy the uh, versions with ads because I don't, the ads yep. never bothered me. I don't, I don't that doesn't bother yep. me. Yeah, the part the part of the whole announcement yesterday I was the most interested in was the Silk browser. Um, I agree. This is huge. Yeah, I'm dying to learn more about that because I, I'm curious if it really is something super different from like what Opera does with Opera Mini, Opera Turbo, or or is it something that all the browser vendor, vendors are going to start doing going forward? I don't think all of them will. We, we had uh, we conversed a little bit with uh, Steve Gibson yesterday about this on the security. Now, one thing that's not clear, and they're not, and it almost it seems that they're intentionally not clear about this, is what happens to SSL. Uh, yeah. And the reason you wouldn't see all browser, uh, uh, browsers doing this is because you've got to preserve the security of SSL. What Opera does is they break SSL. They basically perform a man in the middle. They, you, your certificate that would go to, let's say, Amazon uh, is no longer valid. You're actually talking to Opera, which is then talking to Amazon. That's the only way they can see the contents of the page and shrink it and cache it. So uh, it's unclear whether – and I read the – terms uh, on Amazon's site, and it's very unclear. Almost <laughs> seems intentionally obfuscated, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They say, oh, yep. well, it preserves all, but, the but they imply the cloud is somehow intervening. It's very confusing. That's yeah. something that you can't, you will not see happen. And in fact, everybody's going to SSL, so it may be of limited value, you know, because... Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, there, there's the privacy aspect to this, too. I mean, mm -hmm. what... Well, that's what I'm talking You're about. You're going through... Everything's going through these guys. Amazon. I mean, that way, that means they could learn what else, you know, <laughs> where you're visiting right. that's not Amazon. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's exactly why. I think privacy yeah. issues. Uh, they're also doing some stuff that Opera, I don't think, is doing. Prefetching, for instance, this, and I think this is very interesting. They're observing how people use pages and what the next page most commonly clicked is and then caching that page ahead of time. Right. And, uh, and now that's a speed up, but it also gives us some interesting information. It means that they will be able to tell the New York Times or the Financial Times or the Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. what articles get the most clicks, what people are reading, where they're spent. They'll have all sorts of information uh, that even I, I the, guess, the pages may not have. Yeah, I'm not sure how valuable that's going to be in the short term, because even if this thing's a blockbuster and sells several million or 10 millions of units... That still pales in comparison to the several hundred million that's people true. who are browsing the web on smartphones or uh, oh, Windows PCs true. or whatever. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I, I don't know that it's a big enough uh, audience to merit, you know, that kind of uh, worry. If it really speeds things up a lot, though, you're going to watch things are going to change. Yeah, absolutely. What if they're yeah. onto something? Yeah, they may be right. onto something. Exactly. And then it will be the browser maker that can, uh, you know, be backed by the biggest data center that wins. And that would help companies like Chrome, or at Google rather, That's with Chrome true. and Microsoft. That's yeah. a very good point. It puts Firefox yeah. out in the cold, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, asked, I asked the IE team if they thought that was a valid way to go or if they even had considered it. And, of course, no comment. But, yeah. um, you know, Microsoft has big data centers, too, and they could take advantage of their own data center power t and do this. Right. So does, come to think of it, so does Apple. Uh, right. Isn't Apple using Azure? Oh yeah, yeah, they are. But they do have a they do have <laughs> they a data that big center. North Carolina data. Center. They at least have the, the shell of a building, I believe. 
There's actually a <laughs> Mac Mini in there that links up to Azure. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> funny? We built a giant data center inside it's empty. And you just... can see it from space, but really it's just a single computer. <laughs> That's a Mac Mini. Ah, <laughs> uh, the cupcake. What is that? That's an IE cupcake. Congratulations on shipping. Microsoft sends IE9 cupcakes to Mozilla for shipping Firefox 7. That's yeah. a great story. Thanks, Win Rumors, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're doing that all the time now because they, their point is Firefox is updating so rapidly they can't send them the whole cake. Ah. <laughs> they don't deserve a cake. Well, they only they get do. We, I mean, I can't believe they're at seven. I was at four two minutes ago. I know. <laughs> and, like, and the funny thing is they're saying, oh, by the way, uh, six had memory leaks and we used too much memory. So we fixed that. It's at seven. Yep. It's like, well, wait a minute. I, I, I'm still on four. <laughs> so you're saying I should skip. Uh Let's get one more story in, then we're going to take a break and get your picks of the week. Mary Jo Foley, Paul Thoreau. I don't see any picks. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay, I see them now. And we might have time for a listener Q&A. Eh, a little time. First, uh, first, though, Gears of War 3. I ran out and bought it, Paul. Did I make a mistake? Well... I guess that depends on your perspective. I was in kind of a Gears of War 3 coma last week. It's a, ver it's a really long game, like uh -huh. a really long game. It looks Usually good. the complaint these days are that games are too short. Right. You know, the Call of Duty games are getting shorter. I expect the next Call of Duty game to be a 15-minute affair, and then we all go online to, you know, kill each other. But this game, it took, it took the better part of the week to finish it. So yeah, I found it kind of somewhat monotonous, which is an awful thing to say because it's beautiful to look at. It really is gorgeous, beautiful. yeah. They, they do an amazing job of making a very cinematic, you know, movie-like experience. In fact, maybe that's part of the problem because you spend a lot of time watching movies, not playing. Right. You know, it's, you walk, sometimes you, uh, they, you, you, you know, it sets it up so you walk into a room and all you do is walk forward and then a movie plays. Oh, I hate that. That shows you what happens. And there's, there's just too much of that kind I of stuff. That. So, obviously, if you're a fan of Gears of War, you kind of got to get it. And, um, you know, there you go. But for me, I, I don't like the multiplayer in the Gears of War. And now this version was the first time where I wasn't really kind of blown away. And it was mostly just because it's the same stuff again, a little more colorful and, and much more monotonous. Oh, I'm so exciting. My Firefox is now at 3.6.12. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have like a random version number button? <laughs> Congratulations. You're now running Firefox 3.6.12. I'm curious what Joe Foley thinks about... Uh, Gears of War. Oh yeah, are you? You know, what do you think, Mary Jo? <laughs> I know when the Xbox came out, that was. <laughs> uh, uh, wait, wait, we've wait. lost her. We've lost her. Quick. Gears of what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Think, sorry, guys. I'm not a gamer. Well, Gears of War, as I remember, uh, when the Xbox 360 first came out, that was really the first game. I got it. Wasn't it like the first big it was game? The first, I would say, 360 exclusive blockbuster. Right. And so that's, I think, part of the reason there's so much love on it, is we all are nostalgic. Yeah, they've been very faithful, <laughs> you know, uh, absolutely. Yeah. But I think it's run its course. I think it's my Oh, point. man, I wish I hadn't bought it now. No, no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's so competent and well done. I don't mean it like that. It's just uh, single player is too long. I don't happen to like the multiplayer. Obviously, millions of people do. So if you're into that kind of stuff, uh, it's good to go. But the problem is we've got so many great games coming out this fall. Uh, Battlefield 3 has an open multiplayer beta now on the 360, which is fantastic looking. Uh, Rage is coming from id Software, the guys behind Quake and Doom and all those great games. And then, of course, the um, the third uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare game is coming out in that's November. Right. And that's right. That's the end of my life right there because that's all I'll be doing. I can't wait. <laughs> are you going to be Are you going to be looking at Battlefield? Yes, absolutely. Yep. See, there's a there's a uh, a, a, a real ba battle over these different, you know, which which one are you kind of a thing. Yep. So, I'm more of the Call of Duty type, but uh, Battlefield 3 looks so amazing. It really does. I played through the other games. I've, I've completed those single-player games in both of those games. Uh, I'm going to play so Star Wars that. The Old Republic. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> I understand your love of Star Wars. <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, take a break, come back with more. Mary Jo Foley will, in fact... I'm so excited. Have the Enterprise Pick of the Week. Not the Gaming Pick of the Week. Not the Gaming no. Pick of the Week. We just, <laughs> and we do have our Tip of the Week and uh, our Software Pick of the Week as well. I want to tell you about phone systems. 
This, okay. this should get you excited. <laughs> you, it's probably something you never had to really deal with, but when you uh, when you build a building or you know a new business as we have, and I had never really thought of this. You know, my last job, we had a phone system, and there was a PBX in the basement. You know, a big thing you connect into, and and all of that. And then at the Twit Cottage, you know, I'm a cheapskate, so we ever I said use your cell phones. So everybody just used their cell phones. But as we got here, I thought we need a phone system. Uh, and while we have a basement and we have a lot of gear down there, if you go down there today, you will not find an old-fashioned PBX in the basement. It's too complicated. It costs too much. I talked to my IT guy, and Russell said, let me tell you what I install with everybody else these days. It's Ring Central. Ring Central's been amazing. Uh, there are no startup costs. There's no PBX. There's no hardware. It's always up to date. It's very affordable and easy to set up. It was nothing. Russell was in Spain. <laughs> we just we got the phones and we plugged them in. Bada bing, bada boom. And talk about more features. You get fax in your inbox. It works with your smartphone. You can have uh, calls immediately. You know, so you call us now. There's a phone tree. By the way, I got to record all of the uh, messages. Uh, or you know, you can have professionals do it with Ring Central as well. I got to put Twit music. So when you call us, you'll get Twit music on hold. It gets interrupted with thing. You know, with mess messages and stuff. I and mean, we total control of this. And you can even have it. You know, if you if you go to my extension, I can have it set up. So oh, it's after five. Call his cell phone. Things like that. Um, it's much more sophisticated than any system I've ever used. Very affordable. Uh, it is currently the number one cloud phone system for business. I want you to find out why. A 30-day risk-free trial right now at ringcentral.com. Ringcentral.com. Uh, or call them. In fact, I'd, I think it would be good if you called them because I think that then they ask you, did you hear this? Where would you hear this? And you could say Windows Weekly. 800-800-4070. Uh, uh, I know most of you are not in my position of having to decide what phone system to use and all that, but let me tell you, if you ever get in that situation, it's there's no question. Ring Central. The sound quality is amazing. The capabilities are fantastic. The price, unbelievable. 800-800-4070 for Ring Central at ringcentral.com for their 30-day 30, 30 free trial. Now time, my friends, for our tip of the week. Of the week. I guess that means I'm up. Who's up? I, I guess that's me. That's so uh, Microsoft last year when they launched Office 2010 also launched the Office web apps on Windows Live SkyDrive. These are free web-based versions of uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. And periodically they update it. So if you haven't looked at it in a while... Uh, you might want to check it out this week because they added a bunch of, uh, you know, just little new features, you know, things that people have been asking for. And there's a lot of stuff in there. I think the, the two big ones from my perspective are the ability to pin, print directly from the Excel web, web app. Previously, you would have to load that into Excel uh, to print. And then also the ability to use a right-click menu with the Excel web app, which is kind of funny to me that that wasn't there before. But um, uh, now you can do things like... Um, I'm trying to, you know, cut, cut, copy, paste, et cetera, off the, off the right-click menu. So um, if you haven't looked at it in a while, we do, uh, Mary Jo and I uh, share a OneNote notebook over uh, Office web apps on SkyDrive. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mary Jo does not have OneNote on her computer. What? But she can still still nope, use it I through don't. the office, yeah, uh, through the uh, web interface. How could you not have OneNote? Well, she doesn't need it because it's available for free on the web. Oh, exactly. I get it. Yeah, so it works great. That's you know, just something to check out. A good tip from Mr. Paul Thorat, but that's not all. He also has a magical jelly bean for your children. <laughs> Actually, I, should, I, I guess in retrospect, I should have recommended the uh, uh, the RTM version of the Windows Phone developer tools from Microsoft. You know, the, with the Windows just Phone just came out today. You didn't know SDK. Yeah, yeah. It just came out. But uh, there's that. And then uh, somebody wrote me an email today. They said, you know, I've got a bunch of different computers, and I want to reinstall Windows on all of them, but I'm not sure which product key is associated with which PC. You know, is there some way to find out which product key goes to which PC? Because, you know, when you reinstall, you have to activate again. And if it's Fan on the wrong oh, computer, I need this. It may not work. So uh, there are many different uh, utilities that do this. The one I use is called Magical Jelly Bean. I, I just reinstalled it. I, I would just uh, it's tell free. people to be careful. Yeah, it's a great little thing. It works well. But in, in the setup routine, there's one of those screens where it's like, do you want to install this other thing that has nothing to do with what you're installing? So just be careful not to... Uh, uh, to install that, and but they the, sell uh, key, a higher end. Uh, uh, yeah, but not, if you're just you looking know. for, if you're just looking for product key, right? Uh, this this is exactly what this thing the does. Other, their higher end thing does Adobe and, and other mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Yep. 
Well, wait a minute. It says Windows 7 and Office 2010. So this won't work for Windows 7? It does work for Windows 7. Oh, okay. That's yeah. confusing. Okay. Yeah, they call it the CD key in the in the application, Got but it. that's the that's the number you're looking for. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I you know I you should write those down. Obviously. Well, you know, people, you don't have to. I mean, I you, you can use. Yeah, I forget. Yeah. Or if you get a Dell, you know, as a sticker on the thing, but the thing sticker peels off, or you can't, you know, and then you got to start over. Uh, and now, because Paul did such a good job with his consumer grade picks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get mission wow. critical <laughs> with Mary Jo Foley's Enterprise Pick of the Week. Yes, so my Enterprise Pick of the Week is SQL Azure. SQL Azure is the cloud version of Microsoft's SQL Server database that runs on Azure, as the name indicates. And the reason I made it my pick of the week this week is at the start of September, Microsoft did a service release of SQL Azure. And I don't think a lot of people realize this happened because, uh, you know, unlike a major product release, when they're updating their cloud products, sometimes they just kind of throw those out there and it's like, hey, we've just updated. It's our quarterly update. And what's interesting in this update, which they call the Q2 2011 update, even though it came out in September, is um, there, this is the start of Microsoft making the foundation of SQL Azure more like the foundation of SQL Server Denali, which was a previous code name of the week a ways back. Um, and Denali is the version of SQL Server coming out next year, uh, the major new release. So now what you're starting to see happen, which is just like what's happening in Windows Server, is Microsoft syncing up the, the on-premises version of SQL and the cloud version of SQL. And they're doing this with Windows Server as well. Windows Server, you know, uh, Windows Server 8, as it's called, is syncing up more closely with with Windows Server Azure. So there's there's a lot of nice little updates in, in the service release too. There's like scalability, performance, there's some new um, spatial data types and an overhaul of the management portal. So if you're into um, SQL Azure, it's worth making sure that you've got the new update. I have no idea what you just said, but it sounds <laughs> good to me. I just made it all up. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like you're, you're, you are, you're making a more SQL Azure. I don't know what the hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and now, no, I'm just teasing. I actually know what that all meant. Uh, I, bet you I did. I kind of understood that. Um, code name pick of the week. Yeah. So this is a fun one for uh, Microsoft code name history buffs. Um, this is the second time Microsoft's used this code name, and the code name is Tiger. Well, somebody else has used that code name, I believe. Yes, yes. someone else has used that yeah. code name as well. But Microsoft used it um, way back in the early 90s oh. to refer to their interactive TV system. Um, it wow. used to be called Tiger, uh, their digital interactive TV system. When Nathan Mervold still worked at Microsoft, he was the big Tiger <laughs> proponent. Hmm. But now the new Tiger it also is a Microsoft research-oriented uh, project, and it has to do with solid-state disk technology developed by Microsoft Research in China. And why is this interesting, you may ask? Um, the reason is Microsoft Research is doing a lot of the... Um, kind of like the foundational work for Bing, which a lot of people don't realize. Oh. You know, a lot of people think research, oh yeah, they're doing some far-fetched far products. They're going to be out there someday, some century. But Microsoft Research's work uh, around search is, is a technology that's being folded into Bing as it's evolving. So they're actually one of the feeder groups for the Bing group. And the new Tiger solid state disk technology is helping them overhaul what they're doing with indexing in Bing. So very interesting that that's already kind of feeding into what's going on um, with the next generation of how Microsoft's going to be indexing um, with Bing. I mean, this is big science when you start talking about stuff like it this. It is. Yeah, it's really interesting, too. And big data is, uh, is a big subject for enterprise, too. It is. Tiger. Oh. Hey, I want to do some big data talk to some one of these shows. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I actually want to do a... I, we need to do more about big data because uh, while it does sound like an enterprise subject, and it is, of course, it's a huge subject for business, uh, and it really impacts everybody. Uh, and we now have such big data sets, and we're learning all these things we can do with them. I think it's fascinating. Uh, Paul, I wanted to give you uh, something from the chat room. You mentioned that there's that little trick question at the end of the install of Magic Jelly Bean. Apparently, mm -hmm. there's an open source fork that eliminates that problem. So uh, this is called Enchanted Key Finder. This is from the chat room. 
uh, and it is ekeyfinder.sf.net. It's a SourceForge project, open source. There you and, go. Uh, you can get it there for free, and it doesn't have the you know download yeah. the yeah, weird yeah, yeah. thing thing, and it you know probably works the same as everything else. Uh, and when I have my pick of the week, you ready? Mm -hmm. I just got something from Amazon. I wonder. Oh, it looks like a new Kindle. I doesn't wonder it? what it could be. It's a strangely shaped box. A wedge-shaped box. Do you remember the first Kindle, how beautiful that box was? Yeah. yeah. And now they've they've really kind of gone downhill. Paul, it's know. $79. <laughs> no, I understand. I, I, I know. I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. This is the Kindle Classic. This is the cheapest Kindle they make. Um, oh, you know, it's funny because they were selling the uh, power cord separate. Oh, it's only a USB cord. Okay, now I understand because I thought, uh, why do they sell the power separately? Well, that's why. They, it, one of the ways they save money is they don't give you the thing to plug this into. But you know, nowadays everybody charges this off a laptop anyway. You probably have a little nubbin from a cell phone I or something that would work. I have more than a similar. few nubbins. I'm made of nubbins. <laughs> so uh, there it is. It's very small. I mean, it really is uh, It's tiny. Compare it, say, to the, uh, to the iPad and you can see it's a considerably smaller device. Anyway, uh, I, I shall... Oh, look. Getting to know your Kindle. Uh, not much to know, I guess. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but really, the packaging is not quite what it's it minimal, was. It's minimal. It's uh, made in Seattle. So uh, Mary Jo Foley is at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's her ZDNet blog where she posts like every five minutes. So, you know, if you're not reading it twice a day, you're missing out. Allaboutmicrosoft.com. Mary Jo... Yes. Throw that headset away. We're gonna I can't wait. We got a new wait, one. Wait, do we have an office-style destruction party? <laughs> we should. Get your baseball yeah. bats. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting my new mic and the headset. Yeah, Thank you. The again. Bob Heil has sent, us, uh, has sent you a, a new Heil PR40 for your home, and we'll get you a new headset. Make sure we get her a, a new headset. <laughs> We're going to overnight that to you. <laughs> <laughs> And, Yay. and John said, do not let her leave the room without stepping on that thing. All right. <laughs> no, keep it. You might need it, but uh, but we'll send you something a little bit better. Thank you, MJ. Great to see you. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Paul Therott, you may now leave the principal's office. Paul Therott is the editor-in-chief of the Supersite for Windows, winsupersite.com, the author of Windows Phone Secrets. I'm sure he's working on Windows 8 Secrets even as we speak. Not literally as we speak, but I am, in fact, working on it now. Yes. He is in a mango-colored room, and I like that. I am. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you all for being here. We do Windows Weekly every Thursday morning, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, that would be uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time or 1800 UTC at uh, Twit Live, which is uh, twit.tv. But you can always get the show after the fact in audio or stunning Technicolor video. By the way, did you, now that you have that up, did there, you notice? There, there, there's there. there. Look, that's the I email. I just got my email. That's the email. There's another yep. change, though. See, on, on the current Music Pass, you can use it on up to three PCs and three portable devices, but on the new one, it's on, to, on up to four total devices. Oh, interesting. Any combination of PCs and portable devices. Interesting. Mm. So there it is. That's the announcement of the new Zune Music Pass and the $10 a month without the songs, $15 a month with 10 free songs each month. I mean, you get songs. You just don't get to keep them. All right. The Zoom Music Team. They even call themselves the Zoom Music Team. You're right. That's the that's the new name. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Joe. Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you next week on Windows Weekly. I am starting up my Kindle. Kindle starting up. Which language should I speak? Deutsch, Espanol, Francais, Italiano, or Portuguese? I'll go with English. Ooh, use English as your device. So this is, yeah, this is the clicker. There was some question about whether there are buttons on their side. There are. They're a little smaller. Yep. This is nice. What about the navigation buttons at the bottom? What am I looking at there? There's a back, uh, yep. keyboard. This is, of course, the rocker and the, mm. and the click. This looks like menu and home. Mm. So okay. very Android-y, actually. Back well, to the menu yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll see in a second when it's, it's booting up for the first time. It also shows up, it's interesting, it shows up on my computer as a USB device. Mm -hmm. Connect to one. Yeah, you can drag content onto it. Now, what's interesting is uh, I think it's supposed to be pre-registered to me as Leo's Kindle, but, um, well, maybe it is. It comes pretty well charged, it looks like.
And I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi network here. I don't even remember the password, so I'll do that. Uh, do you want me to have to it? Well, actually, I know what it is. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you the keyboard so you can see. Press keyboard to begin typing. So then the keyboard pops up, and that's the keyboard. And, of course, it's kind of like doing it on a PlayStation uh, mm -hmm. or an Xbox 360. i got to go, nee, nee, nee. I won't do it right now, but um, nee, 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 nee. That's not so bad. If you don't do it a lot, and you don't. You, I mean, don't, really, you don't really need it a lot. Unless you're using the experimental browser for some reason. or But even if you're buying a, uh, you just search for a book, and then it's all navigating. So I, that's why I didn't get the touch. I, I kind of... I don't feel the need for the touch. You know? I want to touch it, Leo. <laughs> I don't. I think it's unsanitary. Well, so uh, <laughs> may, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, is there, a, is there not a 3G version of that type of Kindle? I don't think there is. Uh, no, I think it's Wi-Fi only. But again, yeah. I, I think that that's okay. I thought it would be too, but actually with the current Kindles we have, my wife's is Wi-Fi only, and she really, really wants oh. to have the 3G. I have oh, a, really? I never use my oh, 3G. Don't show that. I use it. Well, I, I use it, but uh, she's, what she said to me is she'll be on a train coming back from Boston or something like that, and she'd like to get a new book, and she has to wait. She's, or, you know, watching a baseball game, at, you know, with my kids playing or whatever, and she's sitting there and would like to go browse the store mm -hmm. and can't, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. This is fairly tedious, but, you, again, how often do you do it? Um, on the keyboard. I, you know, uh, you, the other thing is, of course, you could use hotspotting on a phone. Uh, yep. And, and sure. if you, so if you have a phone that can hotspot, then you don't really need to worry about that either. Um, I just, I just load it up before I go anywhere. Yeah, I, I just think for 79 bucks, you should get the whole meal deal, you know. I don't know. That. <laughs> unlimited 3G is a hell of a deal. In fact, oh, I, I think if they ever make an unlimited 3G fire, I know. I that know. is going to be a very compelling I, You have to think a 3G-enabled fire is coming. I have to think it's coming within six months. Yeah. There have been a lot of rumors. Uh, Ryan uh, Block on, on uh, GDGT was saying, oh, no, no, I wouldn't buy this one because this, is, this was rushed out. There will yep. be a second-generation fire imminently, like yep. soon. I'll yeah. buy both, Leo. I don't care. It's you like know, Star Wars movies. It's, it's, every time they repackage this thing, they'll just buy a new one. For 200 bucks? Come on. <laughs> it's just money. It's just <laughs> I'll just, you know, my, my employees... You put a price on reading, Leo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you an illiterate? Right, it's done. Let me submit. Okay, I think I should be on the Wi-Fi now. You can show the screen again. We're setting up the Kindle. Uh, this is the Kindle Classic. It's funny that that they should call it the classic because... Uh, yeah, because it's nothing like the previous Kindle. <laughs> it's, it's not classic in the least. Mm -mm. Yeah. They're still uh, selling the existing Kindles, I noticed, and they're calling them keyboard Kindles now. Right. Oh, well. Hmm. Yeah, keyboard Kindles. I, I think I always thought the, kin the keyboard on the Kindle was kind of uh, extraneous. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, yeah. Setup is complete. And in fact, it does know that it's me. It said Leo's Kindle up in the top there. So uh, I will now be able to put uh, my books on here. Um, let's see, let's press, uh, the home button and I guess it's still, it's still in the, I'm curious how the, uh, page go. forward feels well, like, does it feel let's, easy? Let's try it. I'll tell you in a second. Welcome Leo. Here we go. And this is the, the buttons are here and it's about the same as the, same. As the, as yeah. the most recent Kindle. I would say it's no. It's probably identical to. Mm. Here's the ads. You see, they're very unobtrusive. And once you're, once you're reading something, I like the ads. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not joking. Uh, because a lot of them are for Amazon things. Yeah. You know, uh, spend twenty dollars on right. Amazon Video and get thirty dollars free or something. You know, they they always have ads like that. That's fantastic. I certainly don't mind them. I I prefer them. Yeah. Let me mm. put the big one. I'm going to put on here is the new Neil Stevenson. Yeah, Reem D. Put that on there. That's that's a fairly big book. That's a thousand page book. They just came out with a new version of it on the Kindle, I guess. So I got a an email if I wanted to download the new version automatically. Ah, uh, Whisper mm. Sync got it right to where I was, and here I am in the middle of it. So uh, that's pretty good. Yep. Let's go to the menu, and uh, that looks the same. A few notes, add bookmarks. That's if you did a lot of noting notations, I guess this wouldn't be a very desirable. Thing. Yeah, but I, I never use that. Right. 
You know what I love is that you can see what if you have a book that people have done a lot of underlining and you can it has yeah. it has community underlining. That's amazing. Yeah, that's truly that's cool. amazing. Uh, you got to try out the library feature now too. What's that? How do I do that? You have you can't do it from the Kindle, but you can uh, go to the website for your local library and see if they oh, offer Kindle right, right lending. And if they do, you can wirelessly deliver them to your Kindle. Wow, that's cool. We noticed you previously registered a Kindle to this account. Transfer subscriptions. Yeah, this is all the same. Crapola. <laughs> yeah, see, I just delete. I delete all this stuff as soon as I can. Remove from device. Good. Well, there you go. That's the Kindle Classic. Looks nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm impressed. This short informative guide. I guess I'll keep that on there in case there's something else I need to know. Delete this. Thank you, MJ. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, thanks. I need a name for this show, my friends. <laughs> and dead silence ensues. This is not the classic? What is this called? I thought they called it the Kindle Classic. It's may I'm made of nubbins? Okay. <laughs> I like it. I don't who wow. said that? I don't remember that. That's good. I'm made of nubbins. Mm. Did you say that, Mary Jo? I definitely did not say that. <laughs> did I say that? No, I think, I actually, um, I think you did say it. I, I, I think I said, said you need one of those nubbin things, and you said... I'm made of nubbins. I'm made of nubbins. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds I think like I, something you say. But that was say. after the show, though. It, it was after it's the awfully, show? It's awfully truthy. It's truthy. Well, if it's after the show, it's not I think that's, it, was, it, was, it was during the unboxing. How about the What about something about the train dance? The train dance. The train dance. Let's call it the train dancing. Train dancing. Okay. I like it. I like it. I like it when hosts come up with names. I never get to do this. I feel special. You've Me lost too. that nubbin feeling. <laughs> <laughs>